the pressure's gotten turned up as this race season's wound on. Tyler Reddick has won it here at Daytona. Oh, yeah, yeah! It's Ryan Brees. He takes the checkered flag. Oh, man. Justin Allgaier wins at Iowa Speedway. Awesome job, dude. You drove your butt off. David beats Goliath. Christopher Bell wins. Oh, yeah, baby. Woo! That sets up the evening. This race is next. The U.S. Cellular 250 from the Iowa Speedway. They're lined up on pit road. They'll get them fired up here in a minute. These pre-race moments are so interesting as a fan, but Brendan gone as a driver. What were they like for you? You know, this is what I try to explain to everybody that, that I'm friends with. I mean, I played college basketball. I played college football. You're sequestered. You know, your coach has you in the locker room, nobody there. Our sport is so different. You just kissed hands of, you know, kissed hands and shake babies, uh, you know, of, of all your sponsors and all your people and, and your team and everybody's there and they want to be in line with you. So these last few seconds are where I always said were my Zen moments where you took that deep breath, you got to breathe. Now you're in your office, you and your interior guy buckling in. You get that calm, you get your spotter on your, on your radio. And this is the, the few seconds you get of our sport to be peaceful where others you have hours to do it yeah as a driver you've come in here with a plan and now you finally get everything put behind you and you're ready to put that plan in the place and you know exactly what you want to do is it going to play out like that but you have to be ready to to make exceptions of when things don't go exactly as you have planned but you're excited about this moment this is what you live for this is what you work for you put yourself in a position for those drivers trying to get a win great excitement for the young guys that are in this trying to make a name for themselves and get a full-time ride this is a great opportunity and they understand that a lot of excitement going through them that they'll kind of have to temper down a little bit he, DJ he talked about Zen moments did Brendan did you have time to go through the race or anything like that or is it just a waiting for the adrenaline to kind of pump up yeah I think some of it is where you start you know if you're starting up front like Elliot Sadler and Cole Custer are then yeah you've got a plan how you want to, this first part of the race to to go out if you're back in the middle you just got to understand I can't win this race at the very start of here I've got to get through this beginning of the race to get myself in a position to have a great night Drivers are buckled in. There's an ignition switch they're all going to reach for as soon as they hear the command to start engines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome U.S. Cellular customers Tim Marino, Jesse Delaney, and Brian Stolle as they deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engine! And there we go, DJ, just like that. 40 cars have fired, getting ready to roll off of pit road and get ready for the pace laps here at the Iowa Speedway. 250 laps here tonight. Uh, it's a short track. Set up the night for us a little bit in terms of the action we're about to see. Yeah, this is one of the great short tracks. Rusty Wallace did a great job in, in helping design this racetrack. And what he did was put drivers in an opportunity to where you can race all over this track. We'll see, we own fresh tires down on the very bottoms, probably the quickest way around, but you're gonna move to the middle and then up to the top. And, uh, I tell you, it's a lot of fun to watch because we're going to see three and four wide racing. And one of the best at running that high line was a guy that's working with us at an, as an analyst tonight, Brendan Gone. He can tell exactly what it's like to run around the top of this track. And Brendan, I guess you probably had a calendar that had this circled in big red pen, right? I love this track, man. This is one we always did look forward to because of that, Dave. I could run all the way to the wall. Everybody could battle on the bottom through the bumps, through the nasty stuff. And I stayed up in my happy place up near the wall. But the fun thing I'm looking at tonight, which is different, in years past, we used to have to bring standalone pit crews to this. You know, you brought your, your B team guys, your extra guys up and down pit road today. I'm noticing a lot of the cup pit crews are here today and flying to Pocono after the race. So that's new for this race. A lot of the guys are bringing their cup teams this week. Appreciate that analysis. You'll be hearing from our pit road analyst, Brendan Gone, all night long. He'll be down there in and among them. One of the drivers to watch for tonight is the double zero of Cole Custer. Parker, you've got more on him? Right, it's been an interesting story for this team, Dave. See, they finished fourth year earlier this year, and you'd think, all right, you just want to tweak on that setup a little bit, maybe since we're only a month from that race, just a month earlier. But 
They came here with a completely different setup, and when they unloaded, they were terrible. He said they were absolutely out to lunch. They changed everything on that double zero car, got into second practice, and a lot of the field that I talked to says that is the best car in the field right now. So they feel like they have the best car in the long run, one that can move around, and a lot of the field is watching them to be the best car here. So I think that's pretty interesting that you would change everything even after you finished fourth the last time you were here. Uh, Parker, I believe the cliche, you've got to do what you've got to do, fits here. He actually kind of snuck up on us, Dale, because in practice, he didn't seem that good in first practice. He was meh in second practice, and then lo and behold, in qualifying, look out, double zero. Uh, that's the sign of a good driver giving good information with a team that is capable of taking that information and making the race car better, and, and that's a championship-caliber team. Those are the things that you have to do. You can't always come with the best setup. Time for us to check out the U.S. Cellular starting grid for tonight's action. Elliot Sadler is on the pole. He won the pole here in 2012. Cole Custer, top five finishes in his last two Iowa starts. A man looking to go three in a row right there, Christopher Bell. Hasn't happened since 1999 with our very own Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kyle Benjamin looking to get that first Xfinity win. Tyler Reddick had an interesting race earlier this year here, finished eighth after spinning in practice, and Austin Sindrick won Iowa start, finished 11th here in June. Of course, Justin Allgaier uh, got there, uh, got a win here back in June. Uh, then Shane Lee, great short track racer. Hickory, North Carolina is where he honed his skills on that short track. And as we go through the rest of the starting grid here, Brendan, they're rolling past you. Yeah, here come the last few guys rolling by and, and row, row five with Brandon Jones and Daniel Hemrick. But I want to see how Casey Roderick handles this. First start in six years, was really fast in practice, not quite so good in his qualifying run, but still super fast. I am excited to watch him tonight. Going through the rest of the starting grid here tonight, and Dale back there all running together. We were talking about this earlier. Are the guys that are on the bubble for the playoffs? Yeah, we've got guys that are in 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th, all starting close to one another. Michael Annette, Ross Chastain back here, uh, Ryan Reed and, and Ryan Sieg, all right there trying to get as many points as they possibly can tonight to get in the playoffs. There's that 23 of Casey Roderick that Brendan was talking about, 25 years old from Georgia and runs late models most of the time. His mentor, Ronnie Sanders, was here this weekend, 72 years old, rooting on his young driver, trying to see if he can make his comeback in the Xfinity Series. As uh, Brendan mentioned, hasn't been in this race and the series since 2012. You see the rest of the starting line up here as they go back through 40 cars. No one went home from qualifying, 40 were entered. And of course, the best of them in qualifying, Elliot Sadler, the veteran, Still winless this season, looking to break that winless streak. Yeah, Dave, we talk about opportunity. This isn't just an opportunity to win. Yeah, that availability is there for someone to lock in their playoff berth, but it's an opportunity for all of these drivers. Every one of them have uh, finishes that they have in mind as to what would be a really, really good night here. So we're going to see battles throughout the night for these drivers on this great short track. Great onboard views we're going to give you tonight as well. Love this one. <laughs> Talk about down on the racing surface. Yeah, we and Ryan Truex hope that it's there throughout the night for sure yeah. because it's in the front bumper. Well, and passing here is an interesting art, isn't it, right? Because you can use a pick, yep. you can use the bumper, or sometimes even the air to move a guy aside. Yeah, there's so many opportunities and ways to do it. I mean, you can set someone up. Uh, you can use another car if you run up on a slow car. Even a, another car, you can get two at a time uh, just because you have lanes to choose from here. Uh, as the tires get older, the top is going to become the, the lane that everybody wants to be in. But if you have a good race car and you're a good race car driver, you're going to have to utilize this entire track. Let's take a look at our U.S. Cellular on board with Elliot Sadler. And there it is. You can also see on his visor he'll wear the helmet cam here tonight. Give us that perspective as well. And this is the Leaf Filter on board camera. Now you're looking at Ryan Truex. Let's get some final thoughts from down on pit road, Parker Kligerman. Well, guys, it's about Kyle Benjamin starting fourth there. This is his last scheduled start for Joe Gibbs Racing this season. He had a start early this year at Atlanta, finished eighth. He's done an incredible job in that car every time he shows up. And so he's really hoping to go out there for the win today because he really wants another chance at Joe Gibbs Racing going forward. You know, for me, I want to know how quickly will my, my lane come in? How quickly will that third lane 
come up there where the guys can use it? Will it be from lap one? Will it take a few laps? Because to me, that's where I want to be, and that's where I'm going to try to make my race car migrate to. So I want to see how quickly somebody jumps to that third lane. My lane. He's claimed it, DJ. He <laughs> always went for the high line wherever he raced. And Brendan Gaughan knows that lane three can work here at the Iowa Speedway. Yeah, Elliot Sadler actually said in turn three and four, he utilized that in qualifying. So no surprise to see him choose that outside lane here to start the race. Down the back stretch now, pace car. Lights are off. That means they're going to go green this time by. You can see 250 laps, 218 miles, and the stages 60, 60, and 130, DJ. Yeah, so they can easily make those 60 laps, but uh, they only got three sets of tires to work with in the pit, so you have to make sure that you make the right decisions there. For the 18th time, the Xfinity Series races at the Iowa Speedway. Elliott Sadler, Cole Custer on the front row behind them, the Joe Gibbs Racing Duo of the 20, Christopher Bell, and the 18, Kyle Benjamin. They're in the restart zone. They're green in Iowa. like Shane Lee and Elliot Sadler like that high line that Brendan talked about and just as we saw in June Dale utilizing all three lanes at the very start of the race yeah that's what's so great about the start and these restarts that we'll see and one driver that, that jumped out of me Justin Allgaier wasted no time in making it three wide with a teammate in Tyler Reddick there to take over that spot right on the very bottom of the racetrack how awesome was that, DJ? Lap one, turn one. They spread out three wide. That's what I was talking about. It didn't take real long. And Daniel Hemrick was doing it, saw Shane Lee and Elliot Sadler. And they're still up there. Justin Allgaier running that third seam. Full third seam already. The way this track was designed, the banking is smaller at the bottom, greater at the top. You can get some speed on that high line if your car's set up right. Now Reddick wants to repay the favor. Yeah, I'll take you two wide teammate and take this spot back. Yeah, and Allgaier's really jumped up there. He's as high as anybody that we've seen. And he's got a couple of drivers in front of him that are doing that. So this racetrack has widened out very, very quickly. Here's Parker with more on Reddick. And guys, did you see him racing Justin Allgaier there? I find that kind of interesting because he told me this weekend that his short track promise has gotten a lot better because of working with Justin Allgaier. Justin Allgaier has shown him a lot of things. They actually copied the setup of the seven car, and he said, you know, I started to realize what I was doing wrong inside the car once we put that setup in there compared to what Justin does so well around these short tracks. And there you see him racing side by side with him right now. Yeah, doing a good job. And you have to be careful not run too many laps down there. That's Run down the bottom is the faster way around, but you can abuse your tire some. Dave, they almost set up that pick right there that you were talking about, and that's not even with a slower car. That's with a car up at speed in Austin Cindric there, but it looked like Tyler Reddick might take that spot away because Allgaier was caught behind him, but then uh, an opportunity opened up for Allgaier to get on that top side and take some other spot. How about, how about Justin Allgaier doing just what I talked about, DJ? Use that outside lane and block that corner. Block the guy in front of you so he can't get to the wall. If you do it quick in the middle of the corner, you can block him where they can't come up. And he's doing that to perfection, trying to do it on the cars in front of him if he can get to their bumper. Battle for fifth on the left and the right right now. Seeing double vision there, DJ. It's good racing all around the <laughs> Iowa Speedway. Yeah, it is. You know, it's great to hear Brendan get so excited about that top line. You know, we, and Dale Jr. does the same thing in the cup races for us and, and talking about that because we're talking about two guys that love to make that and utilize that, that top lane. It is a lot of fun to do uh, because you can go places and make time that others can uh, during the race. So when you can make that work, uh, it creates a lot of excitement, a lot of fun for us to watch. See Austin Sindrick in that 22 car this week, just 19 years old from Mooresville, North Carolina. Running in the eighth position, he's run the 60 car, the 22, and the 12 this year. He will run all the races in a development program for both Penske and Roush Fenway Racing. Dale, look at Justin Allgaier. What I like watching this battle is he's not afraid to go to the bottom we were talking about. He's trying to dive back down. That's how good that race car is. He's not afraid to drive any line he's got on the racetrack. 
when the guy's blocking your line, you got to go somewhere else. Here he goes, trying to use that move, though. Trying to get to that bumper. Nope, got a little too loose. <laughs> and you saw Christopher Bell trying to get the better of Kyle Benjamin, his teammate, which he did. And out front, not missing anything right now, Sadler and Custer are one, two. This is the fun racing further back. Yeah, Reddick, he's, he's been caught down there. Really no chance for him to go to the top, even if he wanted to. But he's really doing an outstanding job. Looks like he's going to make all this pass work. Basically got three cars in about two laps there. And there it is. Slide up in front of Shane Lee in the three. Now Allgaier will look to the low side. Here's a battle up front. Sadler leads. He's led from the pole. Cole Custer, the double zero, trying to chase him down. Chevy versus Ford, one, two. Yeah, you talk about experience right here with Elliott Sadler and then the youth and of Cole Custer. His one win in this Xfinity Series coming in the season finale last year at Homestead. Helmet cam shows you what Sadler wants to see. Nobody out in front of him except lap traffic. Yeah, it also gives you an idea of just how rough this racetrack is. I mean, there are bumps there. The drivers don't want it repaved or anything. They like to call it character, and I know that's a uh, term that Brendan Gaughan uses a lot uh, about these racetracks and what makes them fun. A lot of people, a lot of people use that about Brendan too, right? Character. character? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> character. Yeah. That. Hey, one thing I can bring is character. That's all I got. And we're talking about character, DJ. My spot in turn four that we've been talking about. If you notice, Elliott Sadler is still going just below it. He's going up and up high here, right in the middle of the corner. And now watch him as he exits. He turns back down and goes just below that patch that I'm talking about. He knows what it feels like, and he doesn't like it. He's just diamond in that corner and up to miss that patch. Earlier this weekend, Brendan showed us a place that he called the spot. He loves to hate on this racetrack. Just outside turn four on the high line. As they head back down here, we'll get a good look at that. See right here, there's a patch just underneath it. You see Cole Custer just about to get on it right there with his right side tires right there on the exit of the corner. What Brendan was saying is if you hit that with the front tires and your car happens to be a little bit tight, then it just shoves you further towards the wall. If you if you can cut just down below it like Elliott Sadler's doing, you can make really good time. But these two guys have been kind of having the race of their own, but they got a little company from the man that's won the last two as Christopher Bale has joined this party. Let's see how many times he checks the rearview mirror here because Custer and Bell are right there. You're right. Just how violent this is. You can't find a place that, that your, the car is not going to be bumping around and, and moving around a lot on this racetrack. It's what makes it even more difficult. We talk about a short track. But just because it's a short track doesn't mean there aren't a lot of difficulties in a lot of different ways. I've seen a lot of short tracks with a lot of difficulties. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Including the bumper of the guy behind you. Parker? Well, guys, look at where Elliott Sadler and Cole Custer are running. That is what we're calling the preferred group here today. That's what a lot of the drivers are telling me. Now, if you look at where Christopher Bell is running in third, he's trying to go a bit lower, or at times he might even look a little higher. What Christopher told me was that last time they were here, earlier this year, racing against Justin Algar, he could never get the momentum to pass Justin Algar and said, if I could have, I would have driven away from him. But once they're in that preferred group, it is so hard to get the momentum to make a pass. You see him go lower in one and two. He's trying to get the momentum, but he just can't get it done when they're running that preferred group. And we understand there may be a tire down in the nine car for Tyler Reddick. Caution is now out on the speedway. Yeah, left rear. And it's for the debris from the left rear of the nine. Wow, that's unfortunate. Those tires blow out. It apparently ran over something. We haven't seen any contact with him, so just running over something on the track. But you can see all the debris left from that. Probably a lot of the left rear quarter panel and all the inner panels gone from the inside of that car or the left side of it. That's right. The outer shell of that rear quarter panel belies all the work underneath, right? A lot of fabricating under there. Yeah, but the good thing is these composite bodies can take a lot, so it doesn't tear that part of it up as much, but very unfortunate for a driver that was having a good run. Under caution for the first time today at the Iowa Speedway. Great racing up front. Sadler, Custer, Bell, and Benjamin. They'll all be stacked up when we come back. Welcome back to the Iowa Speedway. There you see the damaged car of Tyler Reddick leaving pit road again. Repairs on that nine car. 
send it down to our pit road analyst, Brendan Gone. And Brendan, uh, you've just had a little break here. 21 laps at speed at the Iowa Speedway. So what do you do here? Take a breath, get a drink? <laughs> well, yeah, from the drop of the green flag, they were three wide. So this is where you take a breath. You give your, your, your crew chief you know, a few little tidbits of information, what it did right when you fired off, where it was migrating to. And that's the main thing you want to let them know is where's the race car going? Did it start too loose and then tighten up too much? Did it start too loose and then come in really good? So you want to know how far, how the extremes were and where it's migrating to, and what line are you running? How well is it running there? Would it move? I think Justin Allgaier was a great example. He could run high, and then you saw him dive to the bottom. So a lot of feedback to be given to the crew chiefs on an early pit stop like this. Appreciate you. We were seeing that nine car. Parker, I understand you've been following what's going up on that. What's going up that? Well, guys, actually, things have gone from bad to worse. You saw that left rear went down and tore a lot of the bodywork there, and they're also having radio issues there for Ty Reddick. The team came back down pit road. They tried to mess with it a little bit, and I think they're coming down again right now to see if they can change more parts out on that radio system because they cannot communicate with each other right now. No matter what channel he is on, they just can't seem to find a way to communicate here on the night. Well, there's no way to slice it other than he's had a tough weekend so far. We see what's happened here already in the race today. Brought up the first caution yesterday. Practice had some issues, Dale, that uh, we thought were going to be a lot worse. They were, were definitely dramatic. Yeah, he was right up here at Brendan Gaughan's patch coming off of turn mm -hmm. four and, and lost. This was right at the end of the first practice session. Really got away. That, even though it looked like that was pretty bad, didn't hurt the splitter. Uh, but they came out because it was an end. Were able to take a couple of those flat tires off, get some better tires back on it and go make some adjustments and he really had a good race car we saw him really work on the bottom of the racetrack moving forward there so very unfortunate for this team that was really in need of a good run they got that win at daytona got themselves a playoff spot but things recently haven't been going so well for them. hey brendan you want to add more on you that know, radio some... issue yep well i was gonna say i don't know the issue itself but dj you can speak to this too the old days if as long as the driver can hear sometimes you don't always need the crew to be able to hear him you know the old days if you were loose put your hand on the on the door sill if you were tight put your hand on the top of the window you know you, you could you could do all the sorts of hand signals but a young driver like tyler reddick probably doesn't remember the days that we used to have to go through those <laughs> so they may not be prepared for a situation like that and Brendan, actually, just recently at Kentucky, when I was racing in trucks, I lost my radio and had that exact issue where I could hear the team, they couldn't hear me. The only thing is it can get so frustrating inside the car because you can't tell them. And if they don't acknowledge those things that you're saying, those hand signals, then it just gets even more frustrating because you're not improving on that car. So were you were you able were you able to, to give the hand signals and did you know enough to do that since you're a younger guy? I, I did know to do the hand signals. So I, was hitting, I was going up, but they couldn't see me. And on my first pit stop, they didn't acknowledge it. I was so frustrated. And I was all alone inside there. That makes life even worse when, when you when you think you're, they can't understand you. It just drives you crazy in the seat. Yeah, when you can give them number, when you can talk to them, if your car is, say, tight, and you say, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 7 tight, they need to, they know you need to make a big adjustment. But if you're having to give a hand signal, you can't tell them just how tight that is. So they have to go in small increments until they know that they're trying to get it fixed. You can see they have a... Uh New cable there to try to hook things up for Tyler Reddick so he can hear. Dave Ellens is up on the pit box uh, talking to his crew right now since Tyler can't really hear him. Let's see what they get done here. Throw a crew member through the window and no. Perhaps going back to green and saying no, not this time. Because you don't want to lose a lap here. Well, no more than, than what they're, you know, they've got enough problems as things are right now. So they want to minimize that damage. Uh, go run as much as again. again, as long as the driver can hear, then they're going to be okay that he can hear his, sport, his spotter and everything. There's Dave Ellens. He, he also may be a little bit too young to remember the uh, <laughs> I would say hand on the roof days, yes. but I know he's watched it and they've talked about this kind of thing. Well, you have to have a plan. You never know what can happen. Outside line taken by Elliott Sadler for the restart, just as he had on the opening stint. And this time, Custer has a challenge for him. Well, he has that. Can he keep, keep the momentum and get a run off the corner? And he does take the lead away right now from Elliott Sadler. Sadler feathering the throttle. But Custer pulling away. Double zero good on the initial restart. 
That certainly opens some eyes to, for other drivers as far as restart later in the day, which is the, the better lane. Is, is that outside really where you need to be? Uh, or in that type of situation where you've got 20 some laps on the tires, Cole Custer was able to drive away off of turn two and get the lead. Well, and we saw that Custer got a nice restart. Yeah. He, he's not supposed to be the first one to the line, but he got a nice roll up there and was pretty even with Elliott as they crossed. Yeah, he can be even though he can actually be ahead now as long as you don't fire off in the restart zone before the leader of the race does. And he did a nice job of getting his car up to speed, not spinning the tires at all. And that's the key on these short tracks is not spinning the tires. So this time by 31 laps to go about halfway in stage one. Sadler way up close to the wall there. Trying to find the handle on the one car. Down to the inside goes the 20 of Bell. I'm not sure that Sadler's car is not a little bit on the tight side here right now. Looks like he's struggling a little bit with it. Trying to get back to the throttle and get the drive off the corner that he needs and make sure that he's giving himself enough room on the exit of turns two and four. You know, DJ, if he's tight right now, that's maybe a heat cycle on the tires, but also could it be track position? I mean, we all talk about it. I know that's a short track, but Iowa's pretty darn fast, a 7 eighths mile. Could be just the clear air factor. He had clear air, now he doesn't. Yeah, that's a great point, Brendan. It doesn't matter. You know, you're well over 100 miles per hour running around here, so you know, that's plenty of speed to make a difference aerodynamically with these race cars. And we talk, hear drivers talk about all the time how just a, a spot or two makes a huge difference when you don't have all of that air hitting in front of your car. Let's head down to Parker. Well, DJ, I think you have some great eyes because Elliot Sadler came on the radio and said he is tight on entry down to the center and a bit loose off. So you called it perfectly. He's tight in the center right now. All right, let's find out, Dale. How do you know when you're watching one car on the track whether it is tight or loose and you're not behind the wheel? Well, you can just kind of see that he was loose, where he was losing the, the momentum uh, that he really needed and, and the, the room that he was giving himself on the exit of the corner. So you can see that Christopher Bell was able to gain on him from the rear getting to the center of the corner. And, and basically, you could... You didn't ever see the back end kick out, but if you've got a situation now that you've got to fix two things. But if you actually fix the one thing, which is the tight in the center, that will help make the car better on the exit because you're having to put too much wheel in it in the center to get through, and then that makes you snap loose on the exit of the corner. So that's what they'll work on to make it better for him. Folks, here's what I believe. Between one Hall of Famer up in the booth and two active drivers, we have this race covered. Expert commentary here from Iowa, where Cole Custer continues to lead. In June, NASCAR's Big Three had their shot at Pocono, but Martin Truex Jr. won out. What will happen when the Monster Energy Cup Series returns to the tricky triangle? Find out tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, on NBCSN. And this just in, qualifying that just happened on our network, it was Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Daniel Suarez, but there were some post-qualifying inspection failures, Dale. Goodness, yeah. The four in the 18 did not pass. Four for the body scan, 18 for the chassis check, and Daniel Suarez has been awarded the pole. Wow, how about that? Just never know. Yeah, and when they have these one-day shows, basically, or two-day shows, but getting everything done in one day, they have to go back through after that qualifying, and so uh, Daniel Suarez is gonna start from the front. Hey, Brendan, we've been talking about Pocono tomorrow, but while we've been doing that, you've been watching the 11 and the 2. What's going on with those guys? Yeah, a little more gap between them now, but about four laps ago, right when we went to break, the 2 car just went right to the corner of entry to 1 and, and gave the 11 a pretty darn big push. I mean, there's a message being sent. There. I don't know if something happened that we didn't get to see. I, I was scanning. I didn't hear Ryan say anything about it, but if the, two, if the 2 keeps inching to him, watch out. There could be some fireworks right here. Brendan, no, there was a fireworks sponsorship on that race car. Oh, yeah, he's I think good. he knew. Yeah, he's, yeah. Our, he's they, already called on all of this. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but that worked good. Very nice, and they appreciate it as the purple 11 of Truex stays ahead of the two of Tiff. That is for 12th position. Hey, Brendan, is it a little bit early to be getting uh, a little out of sorts uh, with somebody and racing at this point? I mean, come on, DJ, it's lap 43 of, of a, you know, 250 lap race. It, I, I'm an old guy. I would say it's probably a little early to be ruffling feathers, but apparently that's why these boys are still driving. And I'm here talking with you because they get <laughs> at it from lap one. As we watch that battle right behind them, Tyler Reddick is in the free pass position in the nine car. He's one lap off the pace. 
caution were to come out now, he would be awarded the free pass if it wasn't him in the caution. Well, maybe he should just let the two go on up there and do whatever he's <laughs> yeah. going to do, and he might get his caution. Kind of looking like it. Tift is right there. Parker? Well, guys, before this race, talking to a lot of race teams and looking at some of the lap times in practice, a lot of people felt like Matt Tift, you see him diving the bottom on Ryan Truex there, was a, maybe a dark horse pick for this race. He looked really, really good on the long run, and he told me back here earlier this year they were really not great firing off, but on the long run they were great, and this time they felt like they worked on that fire off speed. So right now we're not quite seeing the speed that maybe many thought out of Matt Tift, that two car. Parker, appreciate it. We'll keep this battle in mind because we're going NASCAR nonstop. You won't miss a thing. We'll take a break, watch the action as well. It's simple. People count on you and you count on your truck. So we built you the most capable line of Ram trucks yet. The all new Ram 1500 delivers best in class V8 towing. The Ram 2500 has best in class gas towing and the Ram 3500 gives you best-in-class fifth-wheel towing. That's why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. Now, get an average 8,984 in total values on the 2018 Ram 2500 Limited Crew Cab with a Cummins diesel engine. Tiger's Blood is my favorite flavor of snow cone slush. And my pickle juice slush is great. My mouth is like, Rrr. my brain's like, yee. So you like it. What did I just say? It's like it's in one sheet and not one per. Try Sonic's new snow cone slushes like Bahama Mama and Blue Hawaiian. Hurry in before they're gone. Too cold for camping? Too hot to work? Nah. This is the Gator XUV835. With game-changing heat and air, it's never too anything for anything. This is a payday bar, and there's only one thing you need to know about it. It has a truckload of peanuts surrounding sweet caramel. I mean, holy yeah. look at all those peanuts. Best part is it helps you get through your day. Payday. Get to it. If you didn't get your wireless plan from U.S. Cellular, you've probably been blown away by hidden fees, too. And not in a good way! They hit you with an activation fee. And monthly connection charges! Then they throw in data overages! But U.S. Cellular has no hidden fees. Plus unlimited data for $40 a month. Right, my man? So get U.S. Cellular with a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Tiger's Blood is my favorite flavor of snow cone slush. And my pickle juice slush is great. My mouth is like, Rrr. my brain's like, yee. So you like it. What did I just say? It's like it's in one sheet and not one per. Try Sonic's new snow cone slushes like Bahama Mama and Blue Hawaiian. Hurry in before they're gone. Section PU 402, row 41. Jimmy Johnson, the fence is gone in the wind. Section 104, row 4. Blaney got it first win. Section 25, row 3. What a year for Bubba. Section O, row 25. Keselowski's going to win. Section 156, row 4. Kurt Busch to the lead on the back stretch. Section 233, row 1. Martin Truex Jr. wins. You get a seat, but we doubt you'll ever use it. Grab your seats at nascar.com slash tickets today. Cole Custer leads at Iowa in the double zero car by just over a second to Elliott Sadler and Christopher Bell. And you are watching in nonstop a great battle for seventh place between Brandon Jones and Daniel Hemrick. And one of the reasons why that was such a great battle was because Hemrick's car was so out of control. <laughs> you know, I, I talked to Danny Stockman right before the race, and, and this is where chemistry becomes a big thing. Danny Stockman, he was thinking it was a little way too loose. He wanted to tighten it up. Daniel Hemrick, he likes to drive it loose. He wanted to keep it a little looser than tight. So we'll see right now. I think Danny Stockman's winning the argument that they need to tighten that Southway Chevrolet up. Here comes John Hunter Nemechek. He wants eight from Hemrick. How about this, DJ? Yeah, he watch right here. Brent Jones gets right up on his bumper. You can see a little bit on the scene there with him again and that thing that only accentuates that problem that he's having of, of being loose and I'll say that he might need to listen to his crew chief he has a lot of experience and on a short track I know you want to keep your car turning in the center of the corner but Hemrick's a good enough short track racer. He knows that you've got to be able to get in the gas and stand in the gas and carry that momentum and speed down the straightaway. Five to go in stage one and the caution is out. This will be interesting. That's Vinnie Miller in the zero one. And he is around. And then he gets it righted in the JD Motorsports 
Chevrolet. This could bring up some interesting decisions here. Did we not talk with series director Wayne Auten about this earlier today? Yeah. Late in the stage, what would you do if the caution comes out? Because with two to go, they would like to close pit road. They do close pit road. And he said, we'll try to get them back to racing as quick as we can. And then the stage under green. But they can only do what they can do. Well, I'm not sure that there's really anything on the track. Unless there's something that we're not seeing this point. Vinnie Miller was running 29th when something went wrong with the 0-1. This is the one of Elliott Sadler chilling a bit in second place. This is the situation, Dave, where is there enough time for NASCAR to open it? They took a lot of flack earlier this year, but you got to understand, there was four to go. The pace car caught them when they got four to go. You got to bunch them up. You got to get them behind the field. You know, now it comes to three to go. Did you have enough? Do they have enough time to open it? And that's what NASCAR's big concern has been. They're going to be consistent on it, but the fans got to understand, it takes a minute to gather the field. It isn't just the pace car goes out and that lap you can open pit road. Yeah, and if they do open it this next time around, there's no decisions. Let's see what's happening here. Might have been, a, yeah, oh. no, there might have been a little contact. There was a little contact. We talk about this racing all over the track, and you can see there were four cars right there and a little uh, looks contact. like a red car. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been the 15 of Brandon Hightower, I think. Yeah. But the view was from Ryan Truex's car. Good yeah. camera work, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, great camera work, Dave. There's going to be no question here. If they open pit road right here, these drivers are coming to get tires. And it makes that much sense. Even at the end of the stage with everything right here, I believe they're coming to get tires. Uh, and we well, saw smoke out of the 40 of Chad Fincham under this caution, and now there's a fire underneath it. Yeah, Chad, good move. Get out of that race car. Don't know what the smoke was for at that time, but as soon as he wrote it down, Dale, it's erupted. Safety crews quickly over. And now we can assure you that this stage will finish under caution. There's Chad. Yeah, I say that'd be enough of a reason to leave the uh, pit road closed on that one. Yeah. Where did the, I didn't even see anything. I mean, that was, that was a big fire for having no accident, no just kind of random. Well, there was some white smoke coming out of the back of it, Brandon, right out the middle of the back uh, as the field was under caution for Vinnie Miller's spin. And then about two laps later under caution, Chad's car erupted. Knoxville, Tennessee driver is out. And crew chief Brian Keselowski and Chad will have to take a look post-mortem, see what's up with the 40 Toyota. Yeah, that's definitely inside the driver cockpit there. And you so. know why Chad jumped out? Yeah. So take a look at this, Brendan, because we do have a little bit of a footage, a little bit of footage of what happened to Chad. Well, I mean. There, there is nothing right now that tells me why there's a fire in there. I mean, normally I can, you know, Dave, I can tell you, oh, this happened, you hit something, there's a rub. There is zero. That's black smoke coming right out from behind his seat. The only thing I can think of is that's where the oil tank is. You know, maybe they cracked an oil line or something, but, man, that is just random. I mean, he didn't hit anything, just driving down driving down the racetrack and a fire starts. That's, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen that. And too bad for Chad, a short tracker who loves this style of racing admittedly uh, as i talked to him a couple weeks ago trying to get his bearings on the bigger tracks at speed and and learning that craft but grew up in the knoxville area racing the short tracks and very comfortable with what's happening here at iowa until this moment yeah that's what we talk about all of these short track racers get to go to a short track there's no cup drivers involved so you get to get out and and try to get your best finish of the season and unfortunately it came to a end before that uh, for chad Therefore, the double zero of Cole Custer will roll to the green and white checker, signifying the end of stage one at the Iowa Speedway. Big news for him. First playoff points to the first stage points, uh, first stage win of the year, and that'll be a playoff point. Playoff point. Yeah. As we said, as you go through the playoffs and get in there, you never know when one point might be what takes you into that next round. And there it is. What a great sign for Custer and his Stuart Haas racing team. They win the first part of the race. Yeah, we've, we talked about the we battle talk. for the, the, the 
regular season points championship and, and you know these are all points that go towards that and, and make that happen to get those extra bonus points that you're looking for playoff so Cole Custer Did wins stage one. one look right now oops sorry that's all right win stage one we'll come back to Iowa in a minute and continue with U.S. Cellular 250. Welcome back to the Iowa Speedway. Dave Burnsdale, Jarrett Parker Kligerman, and Brendan gone. And Brendan, we're about to see pit stops, which kind of caught your eye. Well, yeah, like I, was, I mentioned briefly, I look down pit road right now. I've got the Joe Gibbs teams, a couple RCR teams, a Roush Fenway team, and it's all their cup pit crews. That's how important these, these races have become. At Iowa, the points are there. The guys brought all their A-team guys. It's all the cup guys that are flying to Pocono. So unique for me we always had a standalone crew that tells you how important Iowa has become to these Xfinity teams let's see how they do Parker you see there at the top of your screen Christopher Bell pitting right now they're gonna do four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on that car in an adjustment because he says he cannot pass outside the preferred groove he's getting very frustrated on that car right now for Christopher Bell you see a good stop there also Elliot Sadler pitting out of second place tight on the entry and tight on initial throttle you can do four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on his car as well in an air pressure adjustment and then our race leader Cole Custer once again four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on that car and he's just struggling to actually being loose loose in and loose off and let's see where he comes out does he beat the one yes he does great stop by the double zero did not lose any positions on pit road retains his position and we'll check and make sure everyone is clean that no one sped on pit road dale let me see if we can dial up the winner of stage one hey cole dale jared the nbc you have a copy yeah i got you guys all right, well, you did your job on the track. The pit crew did their job, but uh, how about that first uh, stage win and playoff point of the year for you? Yeah, that, that felt nice for us. That's uh, our first stage point, like your uh, playoff point, like you said. So I think we got a pretty good automation Mustang. I think we need to get a little bit better to really uh, solidify ourselves in the front, but I think uh, we have a pretty good car. So just got to do everything right. Hey, Cole, with the start of the race today and, and then the, the sunlight throughout this, are you anticipating this racetrack changing much throughout? I mean, uh, I wouldn't say so, honestly, in my opinion, but uh, you never know. It always it always seems to bite you, but uh, we'll see. I don't think it's going to change much, though. All right, thanks for talking. Congratulations. Talk to you later on. Born in Thank South you. Orange County, California, with an eye toward racing, started racing at age four, did Cole Custer. He wins stage one at Iowa. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, with no hidden fees and national coverage in the middle of anywhere. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to coverage of the NASCAR Xfinity Series, U.S. Cellular 250. And it's been a good one so far. We had a chance to talk to stage one winner, Cole Custer, there in the double zero. And he gets ready to lead the field back to green. And Dale, he's chosen the inside. Well, that's where he took the lead from earlier. So that's exactly where I would have gone. But it's an opportunity for Elliott Sadler to see if he can make that outside work. Custer will be the control car, that white car on the inside. He's supposed to fire off first in the restart zone. He does it, and he has the advantage crossing the stripe. But here comes Elliott. How about Allgaier? Making it three wide. Again. Cindric in the middle. Bell to the high side. They get it done. On the bottom for Justin. He loves that high side. Look at him go, DJ. On the bottom, making it work. John Hunter Nemechek coming by on the top as well. The white 42. And Sadler took the lead. And by the way, Sadler took the lead. What a great start by the one of Sadler. Yep, so right now we know there's no preferred lane to start in, at least for these two drivers. Um, they're thinking about it now, aren't they? Here goes Custer back down to the inside. Oh, this is so great. Look, Justin Allgaier, this is only laps he's run on the bottom of the racetrack the entire time, but that's what's so great about this track. And if you're going to be a factor in this, we heard Christopher Bell talking about he can't make his car go where he needs to make passes. That's why they needed to make an adjustment. Justin Allgaier understands that being a former winner here, that you have to be able to move around and go anywhere on this track. Bell chooses the bottom. By the way, Nemechek settled in at fifth. And a little wiggle from there from Bell. 
Parker? Guys, I think this is a key time in the race for Christopher Bell. We talked about how frustrating it's been on being able to pass if they get late in a run. And I believe his team was trying to telling him, hey, maybe get it done earlier, like right now after a restart. Get the pass done early when you have all the grip in those tires and then get into that preferred groove later in the run. And Brendan, I want to ask you, we just saw right there in that last shot down the backstretch. It didn't work, but it sort of looked like the 20 was doing a little side draft on the double zero. Can that work here? Well, absolutely. You have enough speed here to side draft just a little bit right before the entry to the corner. You can definitely suck that race car back and get a side draft on it right now. You watch the 18. If you pin me down, I can lose air. You can get a little bit. This place is fast enough for drafting for a little bit just right before you enter the corner. Yeah, and what Parker was talking about, making it happen right now, but Chris Bell's in a tough spot because Justin Allgaier's right there. If he stays down there too long, doesn't make that. Uh oh, got a little trouble here for Ryan Sieg. Looks like he's got a left rear tire flat. He will break. No, no caution yet. And Sieg is going to make it around. Green, green, green at Iowa. Sadler continues to lead. They've strung it out just a little bit at the front. You were watching 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the right-hand side of your screen. Well, still trying to make that work, trying to get on the inside of Cole Custer. His problem's going to be that Cole Custer's so close to Elliott Sadler, even if he gets there and can make a run, that he's not going to have anywhere to be able to slide up and take that second spot away because Sadler's so close. But he doesn't want to lose third to Justin Allgaier because then that's just another car he'll have to figure out a way around. This is the time you have to figure things out. This is the time whenever you say, okay, I've got to figure out, can I make this happen? Because this might be the situation I'm in late in the race. It's going to mean the difference whether I can have a, a shot to win the race or are we going to have to make more adjustments or is there something I'm going to have to do as a driver differently? So, Brendan, we saw tires come off of these race cars after 60 laps, mostly under green. What did you find out? Yeah, I spoke to the Goodyear engineers. They said a, a few weeks ago with all the heat, they did have some blistering, and you guys talked about it during that race. Uh, today, no blistering. The cooler temperatures, not one tire they've seen so far has any blistering problems. All the tires doesn't look like they'll be an issue today. And if they're running as hard as they're running up front for this battle for the lead, <laughs> they're going to be pushing these Goodyears to the limit. Isn't that always the case? Boy, they really are. You can see uh, Elliott Sadler doing everything Whoa. he can to keep Cole Custer back there. Here comes Christopher Bell, three wide for the lead. They get it done, and it's going to be Custer that tries to go through. He's got the nose of the Mustang out front, but Sadler's going to power by. Keep that lead. Wow. I think right now what I'm seeing is that Cole Custer has the best car. That high groove always launches you like a like a rocket ship. That's, that's the advantage right there. You saw a picture of it, of why you run the high side. You get such a great shot down the straightaways, DJ. You, you, nobody can match you RPM-wise, and you look like you're shot out of a cannon. Hey, Brandon, you love to run that high line, but how frustrating is as a driver whenever that's your preferred line, but there's somebody in front of you that that's their preferred line? Oh, no, it drives me absolutely crazy because I didn't like to go to the bottom. These guys, they're battling for it. You got guys like Cole Custer, though, who aren't afraid. Christopher Bell, look at him hugging the bottom. But, man, when the preferred line's there and you know you can get that run, it's very frustrating. It makes you want to possibly do a little bump and run. And I think there's about four guys that want to do a little bump and run right now. Yeah, I'm very surprised that right now that, that Christopher Bell might not take a, a chance whenever Cole Custer shows that inside move, that he might not jump up to the outside and try to move in. First, second, third, and fourth right there. Traffic jam in the middle of a cornfield. Brendan, talk to me about searching. You're working in this group of four. You're looking for something. You're searching for where your car works. Well, right now you're searching for one of them to make a mistake. You know, you watch the double zero. He did the smart move. The 20 had a lot of momentum off a of two last lap, and he actually pinned him down a little bit. He pulled that race car down off the exit, didn't let Christopher have all the run. So you might be searching for a line, but right now you're just searching for any mistake, any hole. Allgaier, whoa, tried to fill the hole there. He saw a mistake by Christopher Bell. You're right now you're looking for anybody's mistake, anybody's bobble, and, and just fill whatever line you got on the racetrack. Right now you don't care. You're just trying to wait for their mistake. And while this is happening, Austin Sindrick in fifth. He's coming up in the 22. We've got to step away for just a minute. They're going to save the best for when you come back to the Iowa Speedway. But the battle for the lead will stay here. 
And Custer looks like he's going to clear this time. More racing from Iowa in a moment. Catch all the action of NASCAR on NBC with the NBC Sports app. Get closer with alternate camera angles, driver stats, and track information. Anytime, anywhere. And even from the front bumper of Ryan Truex's number 11, running in the 13th position right now. Right before we went to break, you saw Cole Custer take the lead from Elliott Sadler. Dale, he's held it so far over Christopher Bell and is having quite a season so far. Yeah, Christopher Bell's just done a terrific job uh, with everything. You know, it didn't make any difference what type of track he's been on, but you can see seven top fives in the 18 starts so far. Uh, yeah, you know, this is just a very talented young man in Cole Custer here that that has done everything you would ask of him, uh, really. We saw him on the mile and a half last year that he was so good, better than everybody else as far as gathering points, but I, I think that we've seen him become a a better short track racer over uh, last year and this year to where he's becoming a complete race driver. And, and so you talk about these young drivers coming along and, and what they're able to do. Uh, we've got, we, sometimes you talk about one special, there's a number of special young drivers that are just looking for that opportunity to move to the next level, but they would love to take an Xfinity championship along with them. Just 20 years old from Ladera Ranch, California, and you can't learn everything at once, right? No. Sometimes it's where the team is. Sometimes <laughs> it's where your skills match the team, right? So the pole sitter, Elliot Sadler, falling back after leading. Parker, what's up? Yeah, he's falling all the way back to seventh, David. He just came across radio and said no rear grip. And his crew chief, Kevin Menring, said, yeah, we anticipated that, so we dropped the rear track bar one round, but it must not have been enough. And the reason they did that is, remember, they started this race like basically on the tires or scuff tires that they qualified on. So when they put those sticker tires on, a lot of people anticipated the cars getting looser, and the one car took a big swing to the loose side. There's Daniel Hemrick in the 21, who you'll remember was ninth before pit stops, but got a speeding penalty on pit road, restarted 25th, and has powered his way all the way back up to 10th. Nice recovery. Yeah, they apparently worked on his race car a, a little bit for him, and uh, might not be a mistake that that cost him a whole lot. Uh, you know, the race is long enough that uh, he's got time to, to be able to recover from this, and again, looks like he's made his car some better. DJ, Shane Wilson used to always tell me, if you're going to make the mistake, make it early. Don't make it late. So if you're going to make one, now's the time to do it. And he's recovered well. Quick update on Tyler Reddick. At one point, he was in the free pass position. But as the leader went by more drivers, putting them in the free pass position, including the 40 of Chad Fincham, he fell out of that spot. You can see he's still got a very loose race car. He's now three laps down. Hopefully has the radio issues fixed. The handling is not good on it and not going to be with that damage. So Reddick, winner of the first race of the season. In trouble, not in trouble. The 18 of Kyle Benjamin and the 7 of Justin Allgaier. That's for fourth. Well, we've really seen things kind of turn around since those pit stops were made. Uh, I don't know if it's the adjustments that they made, if the racetrack is changing some. Uh, the two guys that are up front were ran up front in, in the whole first segment, but some others that we expected to, to kind of make adjustments and get to make their way up there uh, are not the guys that are actually moving forward. Justin Allgaier in that bright red number seven, the winner on Father's Day earlier this year. Had the setup, had it dialed in, got all the checkers that were available that day. And looks like the seven is finding his groove now here with 97 laps completed of 250. So, Brendan, when you've got the dominating car, you kind of have to come here with a little bit of confidence, and I understand they kind of came with the exact same setup. Well, yeah, you got a little swagger when you come back when you dominate yeah. like that. I mean, Martin Truex has been doing it on the cup side for a while, but to me, I think he, you know, he's not leading the race, no, but he's running well, but he has to look up and say, that one car, that was the one that just won the first stage, dominated that first stage, that was his setup. That nine car, which was fast to the problems, that was his setup. He's just setting this up, he's, he's 
he's an old vet now. He's not a young gun <laughs> that's going to let it bother him. He, he's sitting back going, yeah, I may not be leading yet. Now let me give Jason Burnett one more shot at him and see what we can make, get, get these boys back. Justin Allgaier now pressuring Austin Sindrick for third. If he gets him, you won't miss it because we're going NASCAR nonstop. Let's go places. As people who love the outdoors, we stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. Shop our stores and online for great deals on great gear, like savings of 25 to 40% on select men's and ladies' clothing, and save 30% on select towables. Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. This is a payday bar. It has a truckload of peanuts and a caramel core that gets the job done. It's 10.5 centimeters of awesome, unless you get the king size, which is 14.7 centimeters of oh yeah. Payday, get to it. Mr. Elliot, what's your Wi-Fi password? Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is ordinary, basic. Do I look basic? Nope. Which is why I have Xfinity X5. It's super fast and you can control every device in the house. Hey. What's basement? <laughs> and thanks to these X5 pods, the signal reaches down here too. So Sophie, I have an X5 password and it's Datitude. Simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity, the future of awesome. And here it comes, the closer, Kevin Harvick, puts on a clinic. Austin Dillon wins a very emotional victory. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. Here's Kyle, going to take a bow. And they cut it. Wallace into the bottom of the drive. Here comes the 18. He puts the ball in the You don't like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. Martin Truex Jr., the champ is back in victory lane. How fitting, how special. Get NASCAR coverage when you're on the go with NASCAR Mobile. The official app of NASCAR puts race coverage and live in-car cameras at your fingertips. Try out the premium features, including live driver audio, enhanced telemetry, and an ad-free experience by signing up for a free seven-day trial. Search NASCAR in your app store or visit nascar.com slash mobile. And you saw in NASCAR nonstop, by the way, it took him that entire time, but <laughs> Justin Allgaier <laughs> finally got by the 22 of Sindrick. That was for third. Back up front, Cole Custer continues to lead in the double zero. Talked about the importance of points, Dale, and as they run right now, let's see where uh, things stand. Yeah, this is going to be a battle right to the end, and these drivers uh, accumulating whatever they possibly can. You know, we talk about stage points, uh, playoff points, all of these things really matter. So, yeah, that's what's so great about the system, I think, that we have in place right now, that each one of these segments and every part of the race really makes a difference and could mean the difference as you get into the playoffs is whether you move forward. And in the Xfinity Series, only 12 drivers move into the seven-race playoff. And, Parker, that puts the four of Ross Chastain on the bubble right now as they run. Right, Dave. And as he came in here, it was only 36 points to separate himself, Michael Amet, and Ryan C. But Ryan C. had a rear suspension issue. They're actually in the garage. So he's gained a lot of him. He's running ahead of Michael Amet right now in the 15th position. This is a great run for that fourth car. He's told me multiple times, we maybe shouldn't be in the playoffs of our funding level. But when we have good runs, we know we can get there. We see a battle for the lead right now as they're going through traffic. It's happening, and we've talked about the pick before, Parker. Just a little bit of slowdown from the 52 of David Starr, and that's going to give Bell his opportunity. That is so frustrating, guys, when you're the leader, and you know you feel like you should be given a little more. The 52 gave just enough, but that gave the 20 the opportunity, and he's still taking, he's still chomping at it, trying to get below him. 
Yeah, Custer fought back well, didn't he, DJ? Yeah, he really did. He, he didn't lose his cool there. He could have got a little upset. But, you know, everybody's racing. When you have a racetrack where you have this many grooves, you, know, you have opportunities to go. So as long as a lap car holds this line, then you're, there's really nothing that you can say as a driver. But Cole caught him at the wrong spot. He got beside him in the center of the corner, which means he did clear him by the exit of the corner, and that allowed Christopher Bell in the 20 just to close back up. Getting around the zero car of Garrett Smithley. Puts him one lap down. Smithley in the free pass position will try to hang on to those leaders. Eight to go in the stage. He could get it done, but here come the leaders on more traffic. And Custer, he caught him at the wrong time again, DJ. Yeah, he tried to get a run, uh, uh, really turned the car down. Did a really good job there. I thought maybe he was going to get slowed down too much in the center of the corner. But he's doing everything right in traffic, knowing where his real speed is, and that's the exit of the corner. You know, DJ, I used to always laugh and say, oh, you know, those guys need to get out of the way. They need, they're right they're racing themselves. They're trying to stay on the lead lap. They're doing their thing. You remember, you, you know, you'll get in the driver's meeting and somebody will say, oh, tell them to get out of the preferred lane. I like what you said, DJ. This track has four and five lanes on it. Hold your lane and let me work my way by it. It may be the lane I'm not happy with. I may be unhappy in the driver's seat, but it doesn't matter. They're, they're not just supposed to get out of my way and act like I'm not there. Most drivers don't seem to care about the other driver's happiness, do they, Dale? <laughs> Imagine that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like what I'm seeing with Cole Custer right here. He's doing a nice job of navigating this. He's got a lot of laps on the tires. He's run extremely hard. He ran hard trying to pass Elliott Sadler. He's really run hard here to try and hold Christopher Bell back here. Bell's seeing an opportunity right here once again. Coming up to the 26 car of Max Tolman. Trying to put him a lap down, and there it is. Bell to the inside, done. Coming to four to go that was in the Cole Custer's own fault. That that right there, that Dave was Cole Custer's 100% fault. He knew he was in that lane. He didn't set it up himself. He let himself get a pick set on. I'm going to say that as a driver, you got to be more proactive on that. Just like we talked, he's not going to get out of your way. You let that pick be set. Yeah, that was a time that that he'll probably look back on and say, okay, I could have gone to the very bottom of the racetrack right there and probably made that pass and not given up uh, the outside to Christopher Bell. But that's just something that you have to learn. Christopher Bell has the most stage points on the season so far, most playoff points, I should say. And if he can hang on for another three laps, he'll get another one. An opportunity lost for Cole Custer. Just got his first playoff point of the season winning stage one looked like he was on his way but this is not an easy business no nope, but Dave you know, that was a perfect example of what you brought up about the different opportunities and ways to, that you might make passes here and the, the opportunities that might present themselves and that was with slower cars with a pick uh, happening right there and Christopher Bell did a great job of applying pressure keeping that pressure on until the right situation applied itself and then he was able to make the pass and Brendan brought up a similar point when I asked him what he might be searching for at this point when we were looking at a gaggle of cars he said I'm searching for the guy to make a mistake and that's just what Cole did according to what we saw here and of course Cole's been trying to get back to his back bumper since then he's mad at himself so we've known Bell's been really fast back there it's that what he was having was just a hard time making those passes coming to the green and white checkers for Christopher Bell fourth stage win of 2018 and a battle for a stage point fourth and fifth looks like Jones may have just clipped Cindric at the line both of those young drivers did a really nice job in that stage and getting a lot of points Woo! what an end to that stage battle for the lead late and Christopher Bell came away with the checkered flag in stage two Back at Iowa Speedway, as they run, these are how the regular season points are shaking out. Remember, the day started with Daniel Hemrick at the head. He's fallen back to fourth. Christopher Bell has gone to the top. Let's head down to our pit road analyst, Brendan Gone for more. Well, you know, we talked about how important this is. They circle it. That, the, that point scenario just gives it to you right there. 22 points. The points lead to 22 points back in fourth. Christopher Bell, now the points leader, which is those 15 valuable bonus points that you're looking at when you get to the, the, the playoffs. So, I mean, 
they're racing for every point right there. Christopher Bell was not going to give up that stage point to Cole Custer just because he was going to ride to that stage. I mean, that's how important these points, every lap of this deal is coming to those stages. Ten stage points, one playoff point. Brendan, you are so right. DJ, uh, that's why we saw the fight for, what was it, sixth and seventh yep. as well. Yeah, the battle's all around because every point uh, makes a difference. And, you know, we talk about this being a team sport. Here's the pit crew's chance to shine. Parker? Chris Robel wins his 19th playoff point of the season. He'll do four Goodyear tires here and Sunoco fuel in that car. Just struggling right now with being a little loose and needing more lateral grip inside that race car. His team complimenting him on what he's doing off of turn two. Also, you see the seven just now got a pin there. Four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on that car as well. He's been struggling with being able to run the bottom. Too tight to run the bottom. And Level zero, Cole Custer, four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on that car as well. He's been struggling being too loose and said that he was too tight on the bottom, though, to make a pass. We'll see where he joins in, and he's very angry at that 26 car for blocking him. Yes, he wins the runoff pit road. So Custer gets it back. That is significant. We saw a wrench go in the rear window of the seven car of Allgaier. They made a significant adjustment there. Let's see if we can catch up with Christopher Bell, DJ. Christopher Dale Jarrett in the NBC booth. Do you have a copy? Yeah, I gotcha. Well, nice run there. Uh, we know that you weren't really happy in that first segment with your car not being able to make passes. Looked like you figured things out, though, in stage two. Uh, a little bit. You know, lap traffic helped us quite a bit there. Uh, just pretty tough to pass. I don't know if it's the cooler weather or, or what, but it seems like the top gets dominant, and it's just hard to make any uh, make any runs on people. But lap traffic made it interesting there and played out to my favor. Well, congratulations. Thanks for talking with us. Good luck the rest of the race. Thank you. Bell rejoins in second. Custer wins the race off pit road. We'll be back to Iowa Speedway in a moment. Back at Iowa Speedway, the possibility of a green flag you see the winners of the first two stages. Cole Custer won the first stage. Stage two went to the 20 of Christopher Bell, and of course, he's trying to do something significant, win three races in a row in the Xfinity Series. Hasn't been done since our friend Dale Jr. did it back in 1999. First win of the year, eighth of his career. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins it. He's trying to get the nose under, but the win goes to Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the second week in a row. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is gonna pick up career victory number 10 at Watkins Glen. These Xfinity regulars deal with cup drivers a lot, but when you can uh, own a record like that, it's uh, it's a good one. Yeah. Again, Junior, the last regular to do it in this series. Yeah, this would be a, a way to top off these those first two that he's got uh, and trying to make this three to beat Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski uh, certainly is, has shown what type of driver and team this is. And by the way, Bell uh, openly very much in favor of racing those cup guys. He wants them in this series, hones yeah. his skills. That's the way you learn. You know, that they're, they're the best for a reason and up in the cup series, and that's how you learn quicker. Brendan. You know, now that we have the final stages here, there's the possibility of a green flag pit stop, and it happens a lot at Iowa, and a lot of young drivers they told me yesterday they were struggling trying to find out how to get on pit road. Casey Roderick talked to him at dinner. He said he was really worried about getting onto pit road. My suggestion to him, just don't screw it up. Just lose a second and a half. <laughs> don't lose two laps. Go slow to go fast, right? Yeah, it is a tough entry into there uh, in getting slowed down. These uh, drivers and teams only have one more set of tires to work with, so you've got to be uh, understanding exactly of, of it when you want to make that green flag pit stop. Uh, pit stop. To, to get in for your last time. That pit window opens around lap 150, can go about 100 laps here mm -hmm. on a fuel load under green. Roderick, for his part now, runs 16th in that 23 car. Back to green. Custer outside, Bell inside. Custer cuts down and says, I'm going to take all this. Yeah, you better watch that man yeah. on his outside there, Justin Allgaier. He's been on go on these restarts. Throws the block. Allgaier can't do anything about it. Custer gains a couple of car lengths.
And Brandon Jones in the yellow 19 and fourth there. We saw him coming at the end of the last stage. It's like they've got the 19 dialed in. Yeah, he was able to take fourth away from Austin Sendrick right at the end there. And uh, he finished fifth back here in June. So obviously a track he knows what he's looking for. Looks like they might have made a little improvement. Can he get up here and battle for that first Xfinity win for him? So disappointed at Bristol earlier this year. Led 106 laps there. Was not able to capitalize and take home the checkered flag. And by the way, get a place in the playoffs outright. And there's Brandon down in sixth. Most points earned on short tracks this season. You can see the guy leading is right where he's expected to be. Yeah, and I think that's why we're seeing a complete race driver. Uh, the making of that right in front of us. Because we talked about last year on the mile and a half tracks. He led everybody with the with points there. So just shows you that this young man has come a long way in a very short period of time. Parker. Well, guys, I was talking to the 19 team earlier, and specifically the crew chief, Chris Gabehart, and he said, you know what's interesting about this racetrack? One, that Brandon love it, loves it, I love it, and we scored our most points all year at this racetrack earlier this year, so they really love coming to Iowa and feel like this is their best shot at a win. Well, as a driver, that's what you have to do, is understand where where's my best opportunity uh, that, that I have. Every, you, everybody's not good everywhere, unless you're Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick <laughs> and... Truex. Truex Jr., yeah. you know, but, you know, that you have to pick and choose that, especially as a young driver coming up learning these cars and, and the different racetracks. And Brandon Jones understands this is a place that he can excel, and he's doing that tonight. Slides up to the high side, sees the 22 coming. See Christopher Bell back in one of those frustrating positions again. He knows he has a faster race car, uh, but Justin Allgaier got a great restart there on the outside and, and was able to get by and take that second spot. We'll see just how patient Christopher Bale is going to be with Justin Allgaier right here. Competition so close in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And in the final stage here at Iowa, battle for second is hot. Check back in 13th and 14th. That's Ryan Truex in the purple number 11. And Casey Roderick in the 23. Right behind them, Michael Annette in the five car. You know, Dave, some people are known for how difficult they are to pass. And, you know, we have all sorts of nicknames. I have had plenty over the years. Some people do. But Justin Allgaier is one of those that when he gets in the high, high groove and gets in his groove, he is one of the most difficult to pass. And he's doing what he can to wear those tires out of that 20 car. He wants to keep him pinned down as long as he can and wear those Goodyear tires out. Just beats him to the corner so he can't take the wall. Gets that drive. And Brendan, that's the point I was just going to bring up. You got to go maybe 30 or 40 laps longer on this set of tires than you do all day in either of the other runs. So the 20 running down there and getting frustrated, and you can see him start to slide that right rear on the exit of the corners. That's just punishing that right rear, and it's not going to pay off from the long run. So Justin's doing the best he can to force him down there, like he said. you got cards in your hand that work well for you and work well against your competitor, don't you? Well, yeah, you can do good things for yourself and good things against your competition at the same time. So Same uh, card. Yeah. <laughs> and Justin Allgaier is doing exactly that by running that higher line. And as long as he's not uh, overdriving and abusing the right front trying to run up there, then he's doing a good job of staying in second spot. But he's also making Christopher Bell work extremely hard. And as far as pointing out, working that right rear tire and they are going to have to run longer if we stay under green here but oh what a great pass that was man he made a great three and four right there and got that spot back away to second bell has it allgaier falls back to third up front it's cole custer one second lead over these guys at the iowa speedway NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Jardians and Plaglaflazen Tablets and by Credit One Bank, the credit card perfect for everyday purchases and by U.S. Cellular with no hidden fees and national coverage in the middle of anywhere. And welcome back to coverage of the NASCAR Xfinity Series U.S. Cellular 250 and it has been a dandy. In fact, 
after the 20 of Christopher Bell finally got by the 7 of Justin Allgaier, he has chased down the leader. Hey, what? Once he got this thing in high gear, he hasn't wasted any time, has he? Not a bit. Wow. It's about a second lead, and now it's just a half a car length. There he is, coming off of turn four. Who's getting the better exit or entry right now, Dale? What do you see? Uh, Bell has. Uh, he's Both. figured something out here. Uh, you know, that's he, he's he's able to drive his car hard, and he's able to move around the racetrack. And and you know, this isn't that he's coming from the tenth spot back up and making passes. These are, are the top guys that are at the front. The man who won the race here back in June, he just disposed of him, and now the guy that's been the fastest and led the most laps so far today. Cole Custer not going to give this up easily. Cole Custer has led 100 laps today. Christopher Bell, only eight. But these are the laps that matter. Heading down to the end of 250. Christopher Bell seems to show up lately is when it really matters. They pay the money and give the trophies out. Don't forget what he's done in the last two races. One at Kentucky over Daniel Hemrick and, oh, by the way, Kyle Busch. Then one at New Hampshire over Brad Keselowski and the rest of the field. Look at the line that, that uh, Justin, or Justin Bell, that Christopher Bell is running. He's able to run just a hair lower, especially on the exit, to dime in that corner, DJ, which he's getting that run. He's not losing the straightaway speed, and he's just doing it so effortlessly right now. I mean, it doesn't look like he's putting a ton of effort, a ton of hurt on those Goodyear tires. He just, nice and easy, drives down just a little bit below him, right off the corner here, too. He drives just a little lower. Rolls it through the center, and now watch. This time it looks like he's going to go the high side because he's giving it to him, but he's been turning it down the down just a hair so effortlessly. Not like he was hurting, abusing the front tires, or that he was you know taking a bunch of extra effort. He looks like he's having a, a, an easy day in that car, and he's happy. And Brendan, it's funny you mention that because going into this race, talking to Justin Algar and Cole Custer, they said the one place that 20 car was so much better than anyone here earlier this year was on the bottom, his ability to run that lower lane. And you see him get right to the bumper of Cole Custer. Cole has been on the radio asking exactly where that 20 car is running throughout the last 10 laps or so, wanting to know each and every time he changes his lane, trying to mimic it. Yeah, you saw right there that even Cole Custer, in trying to take a little bit of that away from Christopher Bell, he got on the seam, and you can see the car wiggle. Christopher Bell is going to take advantage of that and take the lead back. I tell you what, to watch him from the beginning of this race, I know they've made his race car better, but he's doing things better to make these passes that he wasn't capable of doing early in the race. To the lead at lap 153. Custer not giving up. They're in lap traffic. He could return the favor. Getting around the 76 of Spencer Boyd. Boyd holding his line, and so far, clear sailing for Bell. I think it's up to Custer now not to abuse his stuff at this point, Dale. They will have to make one more stop. Yeah, keep him in sight right now. That's all that you want to do is be there that if we're going to see green flag pit stops, that you know that your pit crew is doing a really good job. Give yourself a chance to, to stay in this until we get Whoa. that last set of tires. Man, that, that was close. close. You can see Bell had to get out of the throttle. They gave Custer a chance to come up, try to take that inside lane. Here he comes. Oh, and he pins him right there. He pins him down to the bottom. Make, takes a little of that momentum away from Cole Custer. This is, a, this is gonna be a, a tra battle through traffic for these two. They get gaggles of traffic, they get bound up. But to me, DJ, this is where, as an older guy, I love green flag pit stops. It's an art to getting on pit road. And the thing is, you cannot hide your mistakes on this. If you come in and you're a one second behind, and the next time you're four seconds behind, you either screwed up or your pit crew screwed up, and there's no hiding it now. It's gonna be very evident if we end up with a green flag pit stop. And these are both very young kids. They don't have a lot of practice at it. Looking at first and second, how about sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth right here? Yellow 21, Hemrick, 42, the white car. That's John Hunter Nemechek. The blue one of Sadler, and the 18 is Kyle Benjamin. Yeah, this is just Saturday night short track racing at its very best. How about Daniel Hamrick? Had that speeding penalty on pit road, had to go to the back of the pack, worked his way back up to sixth. We get it sorted out for now. Nemechek seeming to prefer that yellow line run down there, Dale. Yeah, he's doing a good job, too. I John Hunter Nemechek had a terrible day yesterday. Couldn't get this race car to do anything that he wanted to. Eventually spun out in the second practice session. Lost a ton of time, but he's really doing a nice job here today. 
Parker. Well, to add on to the job that John Hunter Niemicek is doing, he told me after practice they changed everything and the kitchen sink on that 42 car. And remind you that he's doing that without his, the normal crew chief on that 42, Mike Shiplet. It's a fill-in crew chief this week, Nick Harvey, who's actually making his first start ever as a crew chief. He's normally the managing director of engineering on the Xfinity side for Ganassi Racing. So he's getting a baptism by fire, so to speak, on that 42 car. Parker, I thought I saw Nick yesterday and wondered what role he might be uh, handling here this weekend. So, nice job, Nick. Just look at that right there at those cars. I mean, they're all running really, really good lap times in the top ten. But you saw three distinct lines. One on the bottom, one in the middle, and Elliott Sadler up at the top there. That's why the drivers really enjoy coming and racing here. Josh Williams in the green and white 90, taking the extreme high line, trying to hold that and stay out of harm's way. Elliott Sadler, soldiers, soldiers on in seventh position. Meanwhile, up front, Christopher Bell continues to lead in Iowa. Great racing at the Iowa Speedway. Big time great racing tomorrow at the Tricky Triangle Pocono Raceway. 2.30 Eastern on NBCSN. And Dale, it's already had some drama. We thought <laughs> Kevin Harvick uh, helped our fantasy teams and had the pole, but both he and Kyle Busch failed post-qualifying technical inspection. Danny Suarez on How the pole. That? Yeah. yeah, for Danny Suarez, man needing a win. Not that that's going to have the pole tomorrow is going to propel him to that, but certainly got the best starting spot at a very, very difficult racetrack. I love to race at Pocono. Uh, longest straightaway that you race on, so a lot of speed down into turn one, shifting gears, a lot of action tomorrow. And by the way, don't you think it'll be fun to watch the four and the 18 from the back of the field? Oh, no doubt about that. And you've got 400 miles to get it done, and all the boys up in the booth bring the action to us. We'll start it all at 2 o'clock with Countdown to Green. That's what we started today. We set up how the 20 of Christopher Bell was about the hottest thing on the Xfinity Series, series circuit, and he has lived up to that this afternoon. Although Cole Custer, having won stage one, has been right there, and as you talked about, is keeping the 20 in his sights. Yeah, keeping right there, but I tell you what, Christopher Bell, been watching him, man, just dicing through all of this traffic. Uh, you know, he's catching, he's just passing them wherever he needs to go. Uh, that, that's the sign of a good race driver with a good car. Uh, able to make it whether bottom, middle, or top, he's making this all work. Well, he's making this work today, doing what he needs to do on the racetrack. What I'm worried about, this is the opportunity races. His opportunity is doing what he needs to do on the track. But if this day is green, the green flag stop. I don't want to harp on it, but I'm telling you, it can be big. Look what happened last week with Jeremy Clemens hitting the barrels. Look what can happen. Anybody can really screw up and do something wrong and cost yourself in a big way. So his opportunity right now is let's not mess this thing up. Let's do it right and get to pit road and minimize any damage. And let's set up where we are. The window for the final stop has opened as far as fuel goes. That happened around lap 150. They can go about 100 laps on fuel. We expect that they can probably get to about lap 220 or so, Dale, before they must stop. Yeah, and, and there's really no advantage to short pitting here whatsoever. So I think we're going to see everybody stay out and run this out if we stay green. Uh, got a great battle here. Kyle Benjamin doing a nice job with a really good pass for six there on Daniel Hemrick. So uh, drivers want to get to pit road because they want to make some adjustments, but you're going to have to wait. That one set of tires is all you've got left to work with. On board with Sadler. Yeah, it looks like Daniel Hembert's starting to struggle. He made his way up through there, got up to six, but it looks like his car might be going to that loose side again. Generally, you see a driver, if, if their car, if they're handling it this loose, you'll see them tend to want to go to the bottom side of the racetrack, give themselves some room. You're not able to get up on that top side and make it hang out up there uh, quite as much. So it uh, looks like he's struggling. Elliott Sadler trying to make that pass take another spot away. Battle here for fourth, actually for third. Allgaier had it, Jones took it. Allgaier wants it back, Jones is saying no. Yeah, they, right behind them, I was looking at Cindric again in the 22 right there. Yeah, they've all kind of been stuck right there. They're about four seconds behind the leaders, which is not terrible. Uh, just doing, making good decisions and doing the right things here, you still give yourself a chance. And ninth and 10th on the right-hand side, Ross Chastain in the red four, Ryan Reed in the red and white 16. 
just a really good the race four car for both in the top ten, guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the four car, with the budget they have, we talk about it all the time, but you can't put it past that. I mean, he's running in the top ten, beating guys like Roush Fenway, beating the junior motorsports car. Great run for them. It's a short track. They say the great equalizer. The Ross Chastain taking advantage of that. And Brendan, I had a chance to catch up with Evan Snyder, his crew chief, one of the youngest crew chiefs in the NASCAR Xfinity Series garage. And he told me one of the things that's helping Ross this year was running that cup car, which I kind of suspected. But what he told me, Dale, was it was using that track bar adjuster inside the cockpit that they don't have here, but they do have over there. It's given Ross better feedback, better understanding of what he needs in this race car. Yeah, there's no doubt that you get over there and, and race against the best and drive those cars. They're more difficult to drive. Uh, that There's things that you can learn, and we see that paying off right here. Great job by Ross Chastain. Ross reminds me a lot of Brendan Gaughan because you always see him with a smile on his face. He gives great interviews and, and always upbeat. So, you know, you see drivers like that, and and it's good to see them have runs, uh, especially with a team of low budget like this, as Brendan was pointing out. Man, when you go have a top 10 run, that's like a win to a lot of people. He's sitting there chasing down Elliott Sadler, who has finished second in the points championship the last few years. How about that? Up front, it is still Christopher Bell. Let's take a look at today's Toyota driver update. Brandon Jones in fourth, Kyle Benjamin in sixth. All those cars out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Stable. We're going to go non-stop to break. That means if anyone does catch Christopher Bell or makes a pit stop, you will see it. Sweat the details. Noticing what most will never notice. It's what you do when the thing you're making isn't a thing. It's your reputation. The all-new Ram 1500. Comfortably, the most luxurious truck in its class. And why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. This is a payday bar, and there's only one thing you need to know about it. It has a truckload of peanuts surrounding sweet caramel. I mean, holy ah! look at all those peanuts. Best part is it helps you get through your day. Payday. Get to it. If you didn't get your wireless plan from U.S. Cellular, you've probably been blown away by hidden fees, too. And not in a good way! They hit you with their activation fees. And monthly connection charges! Then they throw in data overages! But U.S. Cellular has no hidden fees. Plus unlimited data for $40 a month. Right, my man? So get U.S. Cellular with a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. No what? No what? I just switched to Geico and got more. More? Got a company I can trust. That's a heck of a lot more. Over 75 years of great savings and service. You can't argue with more. Why would you? Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. This is a payday bar. It has a truckload of peanuts and a caramel core that gets the job done. It's 10.5 centimeters of awesome. Unless you get the king size, which is 14.7 centimeters of... Oh, yeah. Payday. Get to it. Green flag in the air. We're underway. This season. Oh, what a great move right there. 40 drivers. Here they come. He's got it right. In. Compete. Nice oh, risky move right here. the top. <laughs> How about that? Defending champion Bernard Longer and the PGA Tour champions go after another major at St. Andrews. Watch the Senior Open presented by Rolex tomorrow, noon Eastern on NBC. Christopher Bell still leads 1.4 seconds over Cole Custer in second talked about how no one would plan to make an early pit stop under green, but Austin Sindrick has been on and off of pit road, Parker. 
that he has, and it was not by plan. They actually had a loose right front wheel on that 22 car. Just devastating. He was running up inside the top five. It was a great run for Austin Cindric and this 22 car. Remember, he won the pole for the first race here in Iowa earlier this year and then had slipped back after running great in the first stage. He was doing great through the first two stages. So they're hoping that this run goes green throughout because they've now taken that last set of tires. They do not want to see a caution. And, and when you say don't want to see a caution, like Parker said, I've been in this seat before. You didn't plan on it, you know what happened, and your only shot is to sit in that race car and hope and pray and tell everybody to hit pit lane correctly. Don't mess up, you're calling your spotter and your crew chief every lap asking, did any, you know, when are they pitting, when are they pitting, because the only shot he has to get back in this race is the green flag stop. I, you, I, it's gut-wrenching what you're doing in that race car right now. You just have to kind of block it out, don't you, Dale? You know, yeah, a lot of pressure on this young man. He's 19 years old. He's having to drive three different race cars to make all of this work, work with three different teams. But to look at the guys that he that go into this and, and win races. So does he look at that? No, I think that he shouldn't. That's not what's expected of him right now. He's really doing an outstanding job. Very unfortunate, really odd that you get a loose wheel that late 60, in the run. 70 laps yep. into a run, but things do happen, so not sure. But right now, the thing to be, just as Brendan's talking about, yes, gut reach, but you have to stay patient. Don't be this caution that you're, you know, that you don't want to happen right here. Uh, all of this works out. If it stays green, he'll find himself in a decent spot. This kid is cool, just 19 years old. He's raced all over the world, lots of different types of cars, and has now made his way to the NASCAR circuits, the truck series, and now the Xfinity series and running a full season, a couple of different rides, including the very successful number 22. Give Ross Chastain up to seventh, DJ. Hey, Parker. This is such an awesome run. I love seeing Ross do these things in underfunded equipment. He does it all the time. But another cool story behind that four car, they've told me if they make the playoffs, they have many sponsors who have agreed to pay more, a lot more, to sponsor that car through the playoff races. So this could be a lot more budget-wise for that four car if they can make the playoffs this year. Huge deal what they're accomplishing there. How about that? Yeah. DJ, I'll sponsor your car, and oh, by the way, I'll step up if need be. Yeah, we've seen that here, and people that want to say, well, the, the playoff system doesn't really work. Well, it, it does, because we've seen this with other teams that have been able to get in, attract more sponsorship, get more dollars coming in them to make them better. So uh, that's a great story, and, and again, Ross doing an outstanding job here this afternoon. 39 points to the good where he runs right now to get into the playoff. Meanwhile, Christopher Bell continues to lead. We'll go nonstop at Iowa. Let's go places. Tiger's blood is my favorite flavor of snow cone slush. And my pickle juice slush is great. My mouth is like, Rrr. my brain's like, yee. So you like it. What did I just say? It's like it's in one sheet and not one per. Try Sonic's new snow cone slushes like Bahama Mama and Blue Hawaiian. Hurry in before they're gone. Cheddar Pringles, loaded baked potato Pringles. You made cheddar baked potato. Wow. And extra hot. Spicy cheddar baked potato. Wow. Wow. Stack flavors, make new ones. This is a payday bar, and there's only one thing you need to know about it. It has a truckload of peanuts surrounding sweet caramel. I mean, holy yeah. look at all those peanuts. Best part is it helps you get through your day. Payday, get to it. When it's too cold for camping, we go camping. When it's too hot to work, we work. Too wet to keep going, nah. This is the Gator XUV835 with game-changing heat and air and three wide seating. It's never too anything for anything. Nothing runs like a deer. Get $400 off the Gator XUV835M at any participating John Deere dealer. Tiger's blood is my favorite flavor of snow cone slush. And my pickle juice slush is great. My mouth is like, Rrr. my brain's like, yee. So you like it. What did I just say? It's like it's in one sheet and not one per. Try Sonic's new snow cone slushes like Bahama Mama and Blue Hawaiian. Hurry in before they're gone. 
And here it comes. The closer, Kevin Harvick, puts on a clinic. Austin Dillon wins. A very emotional victory. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. Here's Kyle. Going to take a bow. Martin Truex Jr., the champ, is back in victory lane. How fitting, how special. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. You see the 21 of Daniel Hemrick pinning here, who's just outside the top five for Junior Tires and Sunoco Fuel. We've got green flag stops right underway right now. And Pat, and you saw that many of the leaders were pitting and under this car nonstop. Casey Roderick is in right now in the 23, giving up these positions right now, and the 20th Bell is in, Parker. And he is at your race leader, Christian Bell, who's four future tires as well, and Sunoco Fuel. He's been looking for ways to make that car just a little bit better on the exit to have more rear grip, more rear battle grip. Also, on the other side of your screen, you see Elliott Sather in the one car. That was four future tires, and Sunoco Fuel been struggling with that car being too loose as well. Ryan Reed coming off a of pit road behind him. The two of Matt Tift. You see the green and black car exits behind Elliot Sadler. It's a 19 of Brandon Jones on pit road. Parker? He actually had the lead right now through these cycle of pit stops, going a little bit longer than our leaders. He was right inside the top five. Brandon Jones, a great run for him, told me this is one of his favorite racetracks they have. It's going to be four Goodyear tires on the 19, an air pressure adjustment, and Sunoco fuel. And just looking for a little bit more lateral grip as well on the exit in that 19 car. Just the ability to put down that throttle is what he's looking for. And as these cars... And, and look at the difference I was talking about, Dave about making a mistake getting on or off pit road right now the 20 car got the lead or, or, or the gap closed on that lead with cole custer even though he made a mistake look at the gap that that is now there he was way closer 20's pulling away but he closed that gap a lot yeah that's just a, a difference in the 20 car waiting a few laps after Cole Custer and that double zero team decided to come to pit road. Uh, new tires make such a big difference. You can run those laps quicker. So he was able to close that gap back down. Now let's see if he's got anything for Christopher Bell. He was three seconds behind before this round of pit stops. And you saw in NASCAR nonstop near calamity for Cole Custer when he was getting back up to speed, re-entering the racetrack. Here he comes off of pit road. And the 55 of Peter Shepard is right there. I don't know what happened there. Either didn't see Cole him. Cole Custer would have had the lead right there, DJ. If Cole Custer doesn't make that mistake, yeah. he ends up in front of Christopher Bell after that pit stop. That was, and, and I don't know, spot, you can blame Spotter or what, but man, I mean, the 55 was right there. I mean, it almost like he drove right into his door. Yeah, it was like he was maybe looking to see what might have been coming behind him instead of what was there uh, right out to uh, the right front of his car. But, uh, you know, these things happen. You just have to battle through them. Parker. 18 of Kyle Benjamin. Remember, this is his last scheduled ride in this Joe Gibbs ride. Four Goodyear tires. You saw an adjustment there in the right rear. Trying to make that car just a little bit tighter for him. Also, Sunoco Fuel. Good stop here on the 18. Oh, he stalls a little bit there. Oh, lengthy stop right now. They're pushing it. There he gets going. Got it refired. Led five laps before he gave it up to come to pit road. And we'll see where he re-enters in relation to the 20 of Bell, who just crosses the start-finish line now. Yeah, and that was a shame that he, you know, a couple of seconds there extra by stalling the car. So uh, uh, that's just things that, that you learn and, and can't give up because of this short track racing. We talk about how close it is. The current leader is Shane Lee. Lee has not made his pit stop yet. And Christopher Bell is the second in line. So Lee will have to stop for fuel eventually. Still waiting for that possible that, caution. That's the key. Why not? You know, they're in a situation that they can make a gamble here. Stay out, see if this, that a caution could happen. Brendan's been talking about people making mistakes and things, especially after you have the caution. So does that caution come out? Puts a lot of people a lap down. You never know what could happen, and you've got that set of tires sitting there waiting for you. There's Shane Lee.
see what they do here. Again, we were thinking they could probably stay out another 10 or 11 laps here, maybe more, depending on the fuel mileage of the day. Yeah, you got to stay out as long as you possibly can now. You, you've kind of made your bed. This, this is what you're going with. So you've got to run it to your, the full extent at this point in time and just see if you can be lucky enough that the caution should come out and you've got that set of tires. Meanwhile, drivers with fresher tri tires try to unlap themselves while they have the opportunity around Lee. That's Chase Briscoe going by in the 60. So, Brendan, we saw that beautiful helmet cam view that Elliot Sadler has. You've been behind the wheel very recently at this racetrack. Tell us what we're seeing. Yeah, you know, that helmet cam is one of the coolest things I think that TV has introduced in a long time. I mean, it, that is our view. I mean, you are looking right at what we're seeing. You got that steering wheel view. You see him head knocking around the bumps here at Iowa Speedway. And wait till he gets down. He gets to the middle of the corner here. And you see his head just knocking gently back and forth. It looks small on camera. Look at the wheel. Not a lot of sawing on the exit. That's a good, solid exit. But here he goes. He turns down left. You watch that little mark on the wheel. There, a oh, little bit of little bit of movement with that wheel, a little bit of twitching with it. The hands coming back and forth, nice and calm though. He's liking the handle of that car at least. It's not loose. He's probably a little too tight, but it doesn't look like he's doing a lot of saving. You'll notice that if he just jerks the wheel to the right real fast, just little motions. But look, up, oh, giving the guy a, 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 that's a thank you one. That was a thank you for getting out of the way. We, we know there's multiple styles of that. And that, the, but that's what you do when a guy does it does you a favor like that. You give him a little, hey, thanks. I'll give it back to you when it's your turn. But you can see, look at how bumpy even the straightaway is with his head and his helmet knocking back and forth. And remember, DJ, we only got what an eighth of an inch on either side of our helmet. I mean, we're we're hitting basically padding on either side. Our head is knocking back and forth. Yeah, it's a violent ride that you take around this racetrack, and uh, you know, it's just part of the track, the, the character of it, and Ellie's doing a nice job. You, you sell him very smooth with the wheel. His lap times are very comparable to what the leader, uh, Christopher Bell's running. About a tenth of a second off, and, and that's probably Ellie's been fighting a tight condition throughout most of this race. 215 laps complete. Christopher Bell has smoothed out the bumps at Iowa Speedway, the best so far. We'll go NASCAR nonstop. You'll see it all. As people who love the outdoors, we stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. At Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, we stand together for you. Shop our stores and online for great deals on great gear like savings of up to 40% or more on select men's and ladies' shoes and sandals, and save 25% or more on select camping gear. Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. This is a payday bar. It has a truckload of peanuts and a caramel core that gets the job done. It's 10.5 centimeters of awesome, unless you get the king size, which is 14.7 centimeters of... Oh, yeah. Payday. Get to it. IHOP has gone from pancakes to burgers. Woo! With all natural black Angus beef. Say cockatoodle doo to our big brunch steak burger. Or yeah! To our cowboy barbecue steak burger. Combo starting at $6.99 with unlimited fries and a drink. IHOP. If you didn't get your wireless plan from US Cellular, you've probably been blown away by hidden fees too. And not the good way! They hit you with an activation fee. And monthly connection charges! Then they throw in data overages! But U.S. Cellular has no hidden fees. Plus unlimited data for $40 a month. Right, my man? So get U.S. Cellular with a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. It's simple. People count on you, and you count on your truck. So we built you the most capable line of Ram trucks yet. The all-new Ram 1500 delivers best-in-class V8 towing. The Ram 2500 has best-in-class gas towing. And the Ram 3500 gives you best-in-class fifth-wheel towing. That's why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. Now get an average 8,984 in total values on the 2018 Ram 2500 Limited Crew Cab with a Cummins diesel engine. Gainful employment and in 10 months, poof, I'm a lawyer again. Why don't you stop running a game on me and just tell me about the job? I decide what he deserves. Wish me luck. Better Call Saul returns Monday, August 6th on AMC. And here it comes. Austin Dillon wins. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. The big contact. Walks into the bottom of the track. You don't like that kind of racing? 
Don't even watch. The champ is back in victory lane. How special. Take your fandom to the next level and get the latest NASCAR t-shirts, twill jackets, hats, and die cast at the NASCAR shop. Visit nascar.com slash shop today for all of your favorite driver's gear. Gear up with the official Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Championship t-shirts, hats, die cast, and more at the NASCAR shop. Truex has moved up a couple of spots. Ninth now for the 11 car. Good round of pit stops, and I think had the right adjustments on his race car. Yeah, they've done a good job with that. Uh, it looked like early in the race, he really couldn't get up and run that higher line, but uh, some good adjustments by crew chief Chris Wright, and they've got him running inside the top 10 now. Such a cool shot. Get to see the speed of the race car, but also the lines on the racetrack, the seams where there's no paver wide enough to do the whole thing one time. Yeah. And that's why they have those seams there, and that's filled with a variety of compounds to mm. kind of keep the cracks at bay over the years. Yes. You can see uh, college racing here and the, the improvements that we've seen. Seven top tens in, in the 18 starts this year. So they've got uh, things going their way and performing at a pretty high level. Sixth place up for grabs here. Sadler had it, and Benjamin is going to take it. Benjamin having to fight back there from a little bit slow on the exit after that green flag pit stop, but making his way back towards the top five. Stalled the race car leaving the pits, and Dale, I know not a lot of folks drive a car with a clutch these days, but <laughs> these race cars are geared such that that's yeah. a real precision move. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know, especially for guys, I mean, he hasn't been in the car much, and other racing that he's done is it, totally different. So, uh, you know, you, you just... It's the only green flag stop that they had of the night. And, and so uh, you do things a little bit differently, and you just have to make sure that you're on top of the game. Sun is out bright now. 24 laps to go. Christopher Bell seems to have things in hand, but you never know. Parker. Well, Dave, funny you bring that up, because on his team radio right now, they were telling him, you're a tenth and a half better than second place. This is our last set of tires. We need you to take care of them, because remember, he's four and a half seconds ahead of Cole Crusher. But this is everyone's last set. So who treats their tires better here amongst these top three or four? If we were to get a caution, whoever does that best might have the best restart and the most grip in that short burst to the end. So this is kind of a finicky place to be in his position, because he has to go as hard as he wants to keep that lead, but also also take care of those tires just in case it's a caution. Well, everybody behind Christopher Bell better be taking care of their tires because that's yeah. the only way they're going to beat him right now. So the rest of them might as well see it, have their only chance if the caution should come out. But uh, Christopher Bell's just set sail. Uh, the last half of this race, he's really got his car tuned in and has done a nice job of driving it around. Four and a half seconds back to Custer in second. Another two and a half back to this car, Justin Allgaier, who won in June. One a couple times. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite lines of all time from crew chiefs, guys. When the crew chief says, hey, can you take it easy on tires, then you slow down like three-tenths? He says, well, not that easy. You're like, well, <laughs> what, make up your mind. Am I taking it easy? Am I driving hard? Which one are you tell me to do? They, that's when they tell you to save fuel, DJ, but you got to catch the guy in front of you while you're saving fuel. That's exactly right. Yeah, and a lot of times, crazy how when they tell you to slow down that sometimes you do things like stay off the brake, you end up running faster lap times, and hmm. you've actually slowed down in your mind uh, as to what you were doing. Boy, Justin Allgaier sure had them all figured out here in the last race. Not quite the same race car today. It's so hard to come back, even though things haven't changed. The tire didn't change. They, they might even brought back the same race car. They, we know they brought back the same setup, but it's just different. You know, uh, just you know, there was another race. There have been you know, the K&N race yesterday, so there's just been more time there. And, and other people improve. When you don't win, when you're not the winner of the race, you come back with things different. And, and so you make adjustments from that, and Christopher Bell and his team have done that. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is it possible in the four races between that Christopher Bell, Jason Ratcliffe, and the entire 20 team just up their game. Well, they definitely up their game because they've whipped everybody coming and going uh, here recently, even including the very best in the business uh, in this Xfinity series. So, you know, they, uh, once again, we, we've stated this, but they have put themselves out there. If you're going to win this Xfinity championship, it's going through this 20 driver and team. It's an interesting young man, still races his open wheel dirt cars when he gets the chance to do so. That's where he came from. And at just age 23, has already had success 
at the NASCAR level in the truck series and now taking on the Xfinity series. You know, guys, DJ, I, for some reason behind the wheel, I always remember there being a late caution. I always remember a green flag pit stop and it getting, you know, this long run like this. But for some reason in my head, I always remember there being a caution near the end of these things and really making this a wild finish. Yeah, it happens a lot. I'm not Steve Letard and have all the stats and all of that as to when <laughs> that last one will come out or whatnot. But, um, it, yeah, you, you expect that on this short. And actually, we've seen, you know, the short track racing and, and here at Iowa having more cautions. But uh, we've seen everybody kind of keep things in control, and especially as the leader. You're sitting here. You, you've dominated the last portion of this race. You're just hoping there's not a caution. And we look at John Hunter Nemechek. He's done what a nice job he's uh, a you know, good job of recovering from all of this. Again, they weren't in a good place yesterday with this race car. Junk man done a really, really good job to get this up to fifth place today. Just a part-time effort. And what is going on with the 20 car? Caution is out. He had just gotten by the 60 of Chase Briscoe to put him a lap down. And that is exactly what Brendan was talking about. So this changes everything. 14 laps to go. Christopher Bell has the lead, but back under caution, there will be a restart. Off of the corner, there's Briscoe trying to hang on to it. Wow. And wow, Bell gets into him. As Chase Briscoe spins, Bell with nowhere to go. That tricky turn four has bitten Chase Briscoe late in the going and changed the entire complexion of this race. Goodness. I don't know if Christopher Bell's this good or has a lot of luck on it. So right here, that's a lot of luck. There's, I mean, he has nowhere to go. All you can do, you don't want to stand on the brakes because then you're going to flat spot your tires and you have no more tires. Did that look like it was on the patch right there? He went right across that patch and that's where he lost it. And Christopher Bell, oh wow, this is just, the whole complexion has changed now. Oh, there's a good close-up of the damage. Doesn't look too bad, DJ. I might risk it and stay out. Now that's the next question. Do you hold your track position? And I would think that you would because there's really, there's no fresh tires to put on the car and you've had the advantage over everyone so far. It's just that restart, the possibility of spinning your tires, getting up through the gears, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening, but you, uh, that everybody's in the same position pretty much here as far as tires go. And you know, Chris Bell's only thing is how hard on the brakes was he? We didn't see a lot of smoke. We saw some from his car, but did he happen to get on the brakes hard enough just for a split second to flat spot any of those tires? Here's Briscoe trying to stay on the lead lap, driving hard. Oh, yeah, he did nothing wrong other than just losing control there, and that's going to happen at times, especially when you're trying to overdrive, staying on that lead lap. I just can't believe that Christopher Bell was able to escape that with no more damage. We've talked about this patch all weekend. Brendan pointed it out as a spot that on this racetrack that he hates right about there. Or was it right about here? Kind of in between two patches. Yeah, he was already losing. He, the, the back end was stepping out, but then when he hit the patch, that didn't do him any favors either. And it's hard to tell where that smoke was coming from, but Christopher Bell might have done a good enough job of not flat spotting those tires that he's going to be okay here. We'll be able to tell after he gets going on this restart. Right now, you're, you're concerned. You've got these hot tires, and you can see all of that rubber up there, but you can pick up rubber just running down in the groove and making sure that you get your tires cleaned off very well before this restart. Yeah, and that, that was something that right now is going to be really sure because the way Goodyear is lately, Dale, the, the tires pick up a lot, not the marble like we used to pick up. They actually pick up the, the, the rubber that's laid down. So you have to work really hard. You'll see the color of the racetrack change. The spotter will tell you you'll you'll, you'll follow the, the, the tire tracks of the car in front of you because it picks up so much just of the everyday rubber that gets laid down, not just the marble. So you really have to pay attention to that, and that'll really cost somebody who doesn't do it right and get it cleaned up. Look at all those marbles, though. Oh, man. So, Brendan, that area has been tricky. Now we had the nine car go around right when he gets to that spot. I, I mean, I, we talked about it in the pre-production meeting. I just, that turn four to me always has that spot that gets people then. This is the K&N car while we, were, while we were actually talking about it on air. He came through and qualifying, spun, that wasn't because of the patch. And here comes John Hunter Nemechek, right late, right where you lose that nose and over, oversteer it. 
So that patch is, I'm telling you, that patch is a treacherous spot. And it's changed the complexion of this race right here at the end of the, uh, the, end of the uh, U.S. Cellular 250. So, Parker, you've been scanning the 20 car. What'd you hear? Well, right as that happened, they asked, are you all right? He said, yeah, man, that was crazy right in front of us. And then after that, he said, you know, that sucks. I thought we were going to go to distance. So a little upset there, obviously, to have that caution come out leading the race and now be forced to do this restart. But other than that, pretty positive on the 20. There is the calm demeanor of Jason Ratcliffe, veteran crew chief, put with Christopher Bell this year after had been, he had been with Matt Kenseth on the Cup Series for so long. He knew this was going to be a successful operation. It would take time to learn the driver and just stays calm in situations like this, Dale. Yeah, that helps he, a lot. Yeah, and he's got a good group of people around him, uh, people that he really trusts uh, to, to work on and help him with this car. But I think it's a, a really good marriage that Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs has a great instinct of how to put the right people together. I don't care if it's on the football field or uh, at a racetrack. Nine to go this time by pace car pulls down off the racetrack. Christopher Bell in the 20 will be the control car. Can Cole Custer get a good restart? Bumped in the back by Jones. Bell has the advantage going into turn one. Here comes Allgaier once again on a restart, making things happen. Charging through is the seven of Allgaier on the bottom. He'll get fourth, maybe third. Brandon Jones has never won. What's he willing to do here? The yellow 19, never victorious in the Xfinity Series. Eight to go this time by. He's there. Teammates, similar equipment. Jones hungry. Bell going for three in a row. Trying to squeeze him down a little bit right here. Joe oh, Gibbs he racing one, two, three, and Benjamin gets into the 19 of Jones. And now here comes Allgaier to the high side, and John Hunter Neemsen oh. with the picture, and the double zero of Custer up in the wall. And the caution comes out. And that's for the zero of Garrett Smithley. Action everywhere on the Iowa Speedway. And Smithley ultimately brings out the caution. Seven to go. Wow. Man. Intense right there. Restart so critical, Dale. And I've heard drivers talk about it over and over again. It's one of the, hard, it's one of the things as drivers step up that they have to get better at. Yeah, you know, and most of the time, especially as we watch cup racing and, uh, and the, the Xfinity series, most of the time you've been in and you've gotten fresh tires. Restarts on older tires, you've picked up the rubber and other things off the racetrack. It's just hard to get these cars up to speed without spinning the tires. Brandon Jones got a great start. Uh, actually pushed Christopher Bell there a little bit. It looked like he might uh, take that spot away. Boy, that 19 car looks fast. We mentioned it, all three of the front three are from the same stables. Let's see what happened to Cole Custer. Yeah, they were two and three wide through here, and you can see things kind of checked up in front. I just got in a little bit high. You can see his right rear was on that top scene that Brendan's been talking about. You either got to be splitting it or down below it, and he got his right rear up in there. And then back behind, everyone checking up for Cole Custer. Custer saved it and kept going. Parker? Well, guys, I was listening to the radio of Cole Custer, and right after that happened, he just simply came on the radio and said, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't get the best restart. I got swamped there and tried to make up for it. It's been a tough day for Cole. There have been a couple of things that have happened that he'll probably take full responsibility for with a very fast race car, but you'll have days like that. Yeah, and may not have just... But sometimes when you're not to control driver and car on, on a restart and you have these hot tires and, and older tires you're trying to anticipate that you, you have to you give a little bit more when you hear that other driver uh, in this case Christopher Bell fire off you're, you're trying to go and all it takes is just a little bit of slip of those rear tires and all of a sudden you start losing spots and especially he was on the inside trying to go Brendan next time by four to go how's your heartbeat friend I'm telling you, watching Cole Custer jump the cushion there, this is where uh, everybody's trying to get right here. They want to get to where I'm standing. This is a place I have never been to in Iowa. Had to find my way in. <laughs> this is where they're trying to get, and what will they do? You know, you had Brandon Jones and Cole, uh, and uh, Chris Bell. I, if I'm Brandon Jones, man, take the shot. I don't care he's your teammate. I want to win this dang race and, and secure a spot in the playoffs. Now there's Brandon Jones. 
cycling around in the 19 car. He's the 21 year old from Atlanta. Three of the top five, Dale, have never won. Yeah. Actually, top four of the top six. Wait, five of the top seven. There's a lot of guys hungry to win out there. Yeah, and here they're going to put some uh, used tires on this car, which is probably a, a good idea. Uh, it's got to be better than what they had on there, plus making sure that they don't have any tire rubs. They don't want to make a bad situation even worse. This restart is going to be something else, though, because you've got uh, Brandon Jones and Kyle Benjamin probably going to be lined up on the inside of their teammate start on the outside. But the man that's been crazy and getting up to speed quicker than anybody else on these restarts is Justin Allgaier, who's going to be right behind Christopher Bell on this restart. Parker? Well, I was just listening to the radio of Brandon Jones and his crew chief, Chris Kabart, came across the radio and said, remember, these tires are old. You're doing a great job. They will not hook up as good as the new tires. And I think that's self-explanatory pretty much, but it tells you how much or how new he is to all this because uh, he has never won before. So he needs that little reminder. And you always appreciate the reminders when it's crunch time, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're out there thinking. You've got your mind solely on what can I do to make this happen? How can I beat Christopher Bell down into turn one and then off of turn two? As Dale said, the seven lines up behind the 20. That's all Geyer behind Bell. And the lights are off on top of the pace car. There will be three laps to go when they come by. So if you're two Christopher Bell here, sorry, Dave, when you're, you're Christopher Bell, you, you'll want to get down on Brandon Jones a little bit, but you don't want to leave that outside to Justin Allgaier because he'll jump up there and take advantage. Then you're in a three wide situation. And Justin Allgaier loves that outside on these restarts. Watch out for him. If Christopher protects the bottom and blocks and tries to pin his teammate, Justin will take advantage of that. He knows how to do it well. Christopher Bell has defeated the entire field, including cup drivers for the last two races, going for three in a row here. Brandon Jones in the yellow 19 has never won in the Xfinity Series, and the lights are back on top of the pace car. He waved off the restart. Just another lap to get the nerves up Dale <laughs> of course you're gonna tell me all these drivers are calm and cool and no I will not tell you that whatsoever <laughs> there's not a one of this group that's calm right now uh, they all see an opportunity we talked about opportunity they talked about opportunity and a lot of these drivers see that right now right in front of them and as you can see from our graphic this is gonna be NASCAR overtime they will get the green flag Parker well, guys, I'm just continuing to listen to Brandon Jones' radio, and I, I can't get over this. They came across and said, Brandon Jones, first-time Xfinity Series winner. Sounds pretty good, huh? And he said, yeah, as cool as the backside of a pillow. I'd say he's pretty calm right now in that <laughs> position. So the cars will get the green flag. They will have to make an entire lap without incident, without the caution flag coming out to get to the penultimate lap, to get to the final lap. They don't do it. They will try it all over again. NASCAR overtime. Christopher Bell in the 20. He is the control car. The yellow 19 of Jones to the inside. Behind him, Allgaier and Kyle Benjamin. Getting to the restart zone at Iowa. Here they go. Down to the inside. Kyle Benjamin looks low in the white 18, making a bid for the win. But Allgaier on the high side. Justin Allgaier off of turn two, the seven car to the front. And they did not make Justin it around. Do it. I and told you, DJ, watch out for Justin Allgaier. He will jump out there and do it. He absolutely did, Brendan. And that is a disappointing end of the day for the first ride in the 26 for Max Tolman. And that will keep us in overtime. They'll line them up just the same way, except the order has changed, Dale. Let's see how they fix that up. Look at Matt Tiff's car as well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see exactly where did that caution come out in relation to these drivers racing down the back stretch. I think Justin Allgaier probably was the leader. It looked like that he took control of that by making a great move on the restart. Now score that according to the scoring loops that they crossed over. Red flag it here. Yep. You don't want to put those drivers running there. There's a lot of debris over there. You can see the front end of both of these cars that were torn up. And Good to see Max Tolman climbing out of the 26 car. 20-year-old from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania. And that's a harsh end to his first ride in this series. We'll step away for just a moment under the red flag at Iowa. We'll be back for the finish.
Under the red flag at Iowa Speedway, the drivers were trying to get back to the start finish line to start the final lap in NASCAR overtime. And there was a big wreck in turns one and two between the 26 of Max Tolman and the two of Matt Tift. Meanwhile, Justin Allgaier powered to the lead on the outside, Dale. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, dial up Christopher Bell here. Christopher Dale Jarrett, the NBC. You have a copy? Yeah. Christopher, I, I know as a race driver, uh, these things don't always go the way that you plan. You had a nice, had built a nice little lead there, but then things change with a caution. Uh, that last restart, can you take us through the process and, and what got you back here to fourth now? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't really know. Me and the 19 launched pretty equally, and, and then uh, the 7. I guess he got a really good jump there and put me three wide, and the 18 he fanned out, put his four wide, so uh, just threw the short straw there. All right, we got one more here. Yep, got another chance, buddy. Good luck in this last restart here. Christopher Bell will go for his third win in a row from the fourth restarting position. Parker? Well, I'm here at the crew chiefs of the seven for Justin Algar, Jason Burdett. And Jason, how proud of you of the restart your driver there had there? Yeah, that was pretty good, right? Four wide going into one on the top. Um, no, he's done a good job all day keeping us in contention. Um, we haven't had quite the speed we had in the spring or a couple weeks ago when we were here, but um, he's done a good job keeping us up front. And we've actually had decent short run speed. So um, hopefully, you know, now we're up front, maybe uh, we can hold them off on the screen white checkered and um, get the, the Brent car back in victory lane. And real quick, will he choose the top, you think? I would, I would assume, but yeah, there's no talent, I guess. He does like that top, guys. Well, let's see if we can dial up Mr. Highside, Dale. <laughs> hey, Justin, Dale Jarrett, the NBC, you have a copy? Yeah, buddy, go ahead. Hey, Justin, uh, we saw you on the very first lap of the race make it three wide on the bottom uh, at the beginning of the race. What a move you just made right there, though, to get the lead for this race. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, um, it's a testament to these cars, everybody back at Junior Motorsports. You know, when you have confidence in your race car, you can do things like that. And I saw an opening and I went for it. Unfortunately, it got really, really tight there uh, really quick. But, you know, we, uh, we put ourselves in position here and we put ourselves in a spot to to capitalize on it. Hopefully we can do that here with this next restart, but we'd love to get Precision Tank in victory lane. And these Camaros have been fast today. We want to make sure we capitalize on it. Hey, Justin, we see them putting a lot of speedy dry and, and cleaning up, and they're going to, I know they'll get the track as good as they possibly can, but will that change your thoughts uh, as to where you may restart this race, or is the outside definitely it? Well, I mean, unfortunately, you're right. It is hard to figure out, you know, what, what the track grip is going to be like. You know, hopefully we'll roll around here under caution for a lap or two. And, get a good idea where it's at but uh, you know so far today the the outside line's been the one to go and uh, you know I think it's just now it's come down to me to, to get a good restart and, and to try to do what we can to to make sure that we stay ahead of these guys I mean it's it's so much fun racing right now in the Xfinity series uh, with all these great competitors that we've got it's been an absolute blast today so you know we just uh, at this point now man it's the the hard part is actually done that's the crazy part we just got to go out there and do what uh, what we know how to do and hopefully hold these guys off all right, Justin, thanks for talking. Good luck, man. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate it, buddy. We talked about what he did on the last restart. Let's take a look back at it. Seven car powered through, Dale, from the fourth restart spot. Yeah, you can see he's been great in getting his car up to speed uh, all day long on these restarts. But what am I, I mean, they're four wide going into turn one. We talk about there's a lot of grooves here. But uh, yeah, that's just a bold move, willing to throw it out there and trust your abilities and your race car to get the job done when it mattered the most. Any thought yeah, that maybe he can be that bold because he's got wins in the bank and is locked into the playoffs? No doubt. It makes a difference. Yeah, when you're locked into the playoffs, it allows you to do things uh, a little more aggressively. I don't care if it's playoffs or not. I know Justin Allgaier. He was going to make that move. That is that is a move he's made to me. And, and actually, I, I can remember specifically, it pissed me off because I'm used to making that move. And Shane Wilson said, watch out for Justin. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he passed me doing the same thing. And I finished third, and he won the race. I know exactly that deal. And that's why you knew Christopher Bell would try to pin him down a little bit. Justin had the advantage of being able to sit, lay back just a hair enough. And, and do you see that hole he squeezed through? He mm. was not afraid to put himself in that. I mean, that was barely a car width of a hole, and he is not afraid of that. He just, he's going to put it in there, put it right on that cushion. He's an old dirt driver. He's not afraid of a little cushion, and he ran it right on the edge of it, 
and now he's cut the catbird seat for the finish. Hey, Brendan, is that a case that you trust your abilities more or your race car more? You know, at that point, you you believe you believe that it, it's it's your abilities. There's at the end of races, DJ, and you've seen this before. Some people get to this situation at the end of a race, and you hear them, you hear their teams, you see their guys say it. Oh no, not a restart. You know, they get they feel deflated. And other guys, when I see a caution with less than five or four to go, no matter where I'm at, I'm thinking I'm going forward. I'm gaining yeah. positions. Justin Allgaier <laughs> is one of those guys. And there's a difference in drivers. Everybody, some people feel more about it. Some people feel blah about it. I'm a guy, and Justin's a guy that, man, I don't care. I am coming for you on this restart. And that's what he did. I mean, I, 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 I love, that is one of my favorite emotions in a race car. When I hear a, a caution with less than five to go, I'm hitting the steering wheel screaming, yes, 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 yes. Because I may be sixth, seventh, fifth, eighth, third, whatever it is, I know I'm going to gain spots. That is in my head, flat out, I know I'm going to gain spots. I don't care how good or bad the car has been, I'm going to outdrive you for two laps. Hey, Brandon, put yourself in Justin's car here right now. I started to ask Justin this, but I thought I, I would, he kind of said it then. But when you look around, you see drivers, and you look at that board that have never won one of these races. What's your thought that knowing they're willing to do about anything to get this checkered flag? No, you definitely got to be cognizant of that, that Brandon Jones, like I said before, if I'm him, I'm not afraid. And Christopher Bell, who's going to be mad that he just lost that lead, Kyle Benjamin knows this is his last race, you know, going to be on the inside of row two. These are guys that are all hungry, know they're battling some for their careers, Christopher mad. So you're going to have to be a little defensive, make sure you know that, hey, I might get that tap. Don't let myself be too free in this. But at the same time, do all the skills you have, know which restart you're going to do. And Dale, you know this. There's a there's 50 different restarts in your playbook. <laughs> which one are you going to use? And you got to figure out which one's going to be the best one in this situation. Well, you see Allgaier there, the leader, Brandon Jones, right next to him in second place. Chris Gabehart is his crew chief, and Parker's with him. Right, Dave, and this team is really hungry for a win, like uh, Bren, uh, Brennan Gaughan was explaining there. We were just laughing about how much he can talk, right? But how about your young driver getting that restart there down into one? You told him, be cognizant, those, were t those old tires would not hook up as well as the new ones. He did a pretty good job. Yeah, he's just been improving so much in these kind of situations, and the key for a guy like him is keep putting him in these situations so he can learn from them, and he's doing a great job. I think it's clear how far he's come along, and... Hey, we got the Menards Toyota Camry in position to win a race here. And now we're looking right now outside your pit box. You have a great view down in turns one and two of the beach that they're laying down here. So how much of this you can describe to them and let them know what's going on down here? We've talked about it a little bit already. It's clearly going to be chaos. There's so many young, hungry drivers to win here. And uh, you give them these conditions. And as a driver, you know what ensues after that. So it's going to be exciting. Hopefully we can come out on the right side of it. Guys, I can tell you, I'm just looking at this right now, and I can't believe the grip level will be very high when they get going here soon. <laughs> May give new definition to uh, slide job in NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. So tomorrow, we're going to hear from slide job. He'll be out in Pocono. Monster Energy Series cut down to green at 2 o'clock. And then racing from Pocono, the Monster Energy Series, along with the post race. And don't forget, right after that, IndyCar Series racing from mid-Ohio. Big day of racing on NBCSN. Won't want to miss it. Yeah, we're going to have a new winner tomorrow. Is that possible? Can That's somebody right. beat the big three? Well, two of them are in the back. Player? Yeah. Right. Well, they got to go to the back, but they're going to make their way up there. I wouldn't <laughs> go changing my fantasy lineup if I were you. They're going to find a way back up there. But can somebody step up at a tough racetrack like that and, and go to victory lane that we haven't seen make it happen yet this year? So track time right now for the sweepers. And uh, while they get that cleaned up, we'll see if we can reach Brandon Jones in the 19 car. Hey, Brandon, Dale Jarrett, NBC. You have a copy? Sir, go ahead. Well, young man, you've got yourself in the position. I know that you've always thought about and dreamed of opportunity to win one of these Xfinity races. Uh, what do you have to do to make this happen? And we've been trying uh, extremely hard all year long. Uh, we actually had a shot, I felt like, uh, the last race uh, here this this year, and uh, just uh, didn't capitalize on 100% here, so we're going to uh, redeem ourselves and hopefully come out ahead of this deal, but that will be fun to watch with a uh, green-white checker. What's the difficulty of restarting when you're not in control? Your own older tires, uh, uh, Justin, in this case, uh, it was Christopher Bell earlier. You did a great job of staying up there on that, but the difficulty of not spinning tires and getting your job done to give you a chance at winning this race. 
Yeah, the biggest thing is, is just the timing of it. Uh, when you're out the control car, it's really difficult to try to roll up to that box in time right when he's going to leave. Uh, like you mentioned there, having really old tires on these cars right now, it's really hard not to spin the back tires and uh, have them swarm you down in turn one. So it's all about timing. Uh, I nailed it, I think, pretty good that last one, so I just got to repeat it, and uh, we'll be good here. All right, you've done a great job to this point. Good luck in trying to get that first win, man. Sir, thank you. Big expectations for Brandon of himself this year. Had two years in the Xfinity Series with Richard Childress Racing. Now making the move over to Joe Gibbs Racing. And it's been a bit of a transition, but as you said, finds himself in that spot he so desperately wants. We'll take a break. Come back to Iowa. Track cleanup continuing. There's a final restart or more awaiting. It's a tough August awaiting these NASCAR Xfinity drivers. Their first challenge, the historic road course at Watkins Glen. Next Saturday, 3 Eastern on NBC. Is that deer, Dale? Yeah. They must like corn. There's a lot of it. There were three of them out there. Hi, guys. Hey, move up to the fence. There's going to be a great finish coming up here at the Iowa Speedway. <laughs> Matt Tiff has been released from the infield care center and Brendan's with him. Yeah, we got Matt Tiff right as he came out. Matt, you had an up and down sort of day in the top 10, in and out of it, but in the end, just such a bummer of a day. What happened? Yeah, he struggled a little bit today on our short run speed. I thought once we got our long run speed going, it was good, just kind of had to make up time. But uh, unfortunately there, we, we got the lucky dog and we're able to come to the back of the field, but um, restarted behind some of the lap cars back there and I think the 52 tagged the 26. and. I was there and there's nowhere we could go. So uh, we'll try to get it turned around. You know, we've had some speed here lately, but uh, today just wasn't our day. And we'll rally and uh, try to get some more momentum going into the playoffs. Well, nice job today, Parker. Er, Parker, nice job today, Matt. Didn't end like you wanted, but uh, you know, we'll see you next week and make sure you improve on it. Parker, what do you got going on? Sure thing, Brendan. I'm actually here with Dave Rogers, who's the crew chief for Kyle Benjamin, filling in for the normal crew chief, Eric Phillips. You and I were just discussing, it's kind of been a while since you're in the crew chief role. Having fun? Enjoy this? Yeah, having a lot of fun. You know, if, uh, if Eric wanted to set up my cars every week, I'd do this every week. This is a blast. This is working out for you. So you got a young driver, a hungry driver, maybe his last scheduled start here for Joe Gibbs Racing. What are you telling him on the radio for this last restart? Well, right now we have uh, all three Gibbs cars up front, which is the way we want to end. We don't want any tore up. So you just tell him be smart, but be aggressive. You know, he doesn't have a lot of races. He's a young kid. He's trying to make a name for himself. Um, we want to put him in victory lane, so we're telling him to get after it. Guys, if I'm in Kyle's position, I just go for it. What do you got to lose? That's a good point. Why don't we find out from him? Dale can dial up the driver of the 18 now. Hey, Kyle, Dale Jarrett, the NBC. Good to talk? Yeah, it's at four. Well, I know that uh, you've thought a lot about this uh, and, and having this opportunity in this Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota to be in position to win one of these races. What are your thoughts right now? I'm a little nervous right now because I know I have such a big shot to win. Uh, have a fast car, especially on the short run. Uh, I have a really good shot out of here. So if I, uh, if I do my part, don't make any mistakes, things play out right in front of me. Um, I know it'll be tough with three laps to go, but I think that should be enough for us to get up to the lead. Hopefully get the win. Hey, Kyle, as a young driver not getting many chances, and this is your scheduled last start uh, in, in this car, does that add more pressure to a day like today? Uh, for sure. Um, I feel like the more limited you are on opportunities, the more pressure puts on you, like you said. Uh, the key, I think, is just to not think about the pressure. Go out and do the best you can do. There are certain things that are going to be out of your control, and just uh, don't try to control what you can't control. All right, you've done a lot of good things. I uh, hope that this last or this next restart goes your way. Good luck. Thank you. Drivers are firing him up, including Kyle Benjamin, the 20 year old from Easley, South Carolina. His family did a lot to get him started in racing, and then he had a couple of full seasons in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. Kind of fell off the radar just a little bit. This is only his seventh start in the Xfinity Series, Dale, and he's done well. Yeah, it's really good. You, you can tell by his car control and the things that he's been able to do uh, throughout the day. He's put himself here in a position that uh, all of these drivers look forward to having opportunity to win. Here we are in the credit one overtime. And this will be the second overtime. <laughs> and they will take as many as they need to, Dale. They will try to get from the green flag back around to the stripe again without a caution. If they do that, then they're on the final lap. 
and that is how overtime works. Yeah, I kept wanting to say this last or final restart and might not be the case because we've got some hungry drivers trying to get it done. Parker. Oh. Well, guys, I just got an interesting text message. It was from none other than our own Jeff Burton. And he said, hey, <laughs> check the tires on that 18. Why? He has eight lap newer tires than his rivals there that are leading ahead of him, Justin Allgaier. So he might just have that little bit more grip in those tires for this late race restart to get that win. Teamwork from the NBC team. Burton, we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, so much going on. Didn't even think about that they had stayed out and run a little bit longer there. Well, he had never know when that make a difference. He had 17 minutes to work on it. That's how yeah. long the red flag was. So. And <laughs> yeah, uh, we heard him say that he's a little nervous, but I would. Yeah, I'm glad to know that he's nervous. I, I would expect that. I, you, know, you can be a veteran in this position and you're nervous about what's going on. But imagine this young man in his last opportunity in this car this year, uh, scheduled wise, uh, that this is your chance to show the the world that in this position with all the pressure that you're able to handle that and go get the job done. It can happen for anyone. Remember how it worked for Ryan Priest last year at this track. Some of his sponsors got together, pooled their money and said, we want to put you in a Joe Gibbs racing car. And they did indeed do it. 20 to victory lane at the hands of Ryan Priest. Had to hold off another Joe Gibbs car, though. Yeah, sure did. Had a great race there. really changed Ryan Priest's racing life. He became that guy who can win, not just that guy who ran in the Xfinity Series. We've seen him a couple of times this year, still keeping his modified career going, building his own and racing some. And Good racer, Ryan Priest. So could that be Kyle Benjamin's story today? Could that be Brandon Jones' story today? And don't forget that Ryan Priest just got added. Just a big news with Craftsman at Joe Gibbs Racing and a bunch of races for uh, Ryan Priest coming up now. Uh, they just added to his schedule. So big news for Ryan Priest. And like you said, can Kyle Benjamin be the next one in that uh, in that vein to do what Ryan Priest did and become the next it guy? He's got a chance for sure. He put himself in that position. That car, that 18 car you saw there, that was Kyle Benjamin in that car racing Ryan Priest for the win here. So he knows how to get it done here. Uh, he's got a lot going on uh, around him and in front of him. We saw a four wide uh, in turns one and two the last time. I don't expect to be anything less this time. Going to be interesting. What is Christopher Bell going to try to do mm. from this fourth spot? Uh, he knows that Justin Allgaier is going to protect the outside. So do you automatically try to get that, push him out there a little bit and get to the middle to where you can get beside Justin Allgaier? Ryan Truex's view in seventh. He'll restart on the inside line. And I imagine it'd be five or six wide by the time they get yeah, to turn two. So. <laughs> yeah, you got him in seventh, Ross Chastain in eighth, Ryan Reed with a really good run sitting there in the ninth spot. So a number of these drivers having really good runs and points days for them. There's Chastain's red four. There's Reed's red and white 16. Sadler back there. What's he thinking in 10th? He'll be on the outside of row five. Good look at Elliott. He's given us some great views with that helmet cam today. And I know it hasn't been the day after starting from the pole that he was looking for. Been battling a tight race car most of the day. And in a situation like this where you've got the older tires, when he had a tight race car, probably wore that right front a little bit more. And this is not a good situation when you have some. Even when that tire cools down like that, when you've worn that right front tire, that thing just won't grip the way that you need it to to go try to make up the spots. Hey, DJ, guess what? Lights are off on the pace car. Uh-oh. That means we're ready to go overtime again. Yeah, if you live here in Iowa, this is my speedway, but fans have embraced this 7 8 mile high bank short track like you wouldn't believe. Part of the reason is the great racing they've seen, even down to the overtime finishes. Justin Allgaier is the control car in the red seven to his inside. Brandon Jones has never won before. Directly behind Allgaier, Kyle Benjamin. Oh, now see, all guys going to take the top spot. So he's going to start on the outside, Dale. What do you think? It's going to be tough. He's going to be hard to beat right here. He will see the green flag. It goes, and this is overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Allgaier gets free. There's still three and four wide behind him. Jones gets a little slippery. Here comes Christopher Bell. 
we got into the back of the guy right there. He's going to try to go to the bottom. Bell to the inside. Can he make the pass complete? Slides up the track. Allgaier's going to hold the spot there, side by side, coming to the final lap. White flag. Bell has the advantage now. Allgaier loses grip. Christopher Bell, the lead down the back stretch. Christopher Bell through turns three and four. Here comes Justin Allgaier. Oh, spinning behind, but they're coming to the checkers. Christopher Bell will win three in a row. The first driver to do so as a regular in the Xfinity Series since Dale Jr. back in 1999. What a finish. And Jones gets it righted. And Allgaier with a little nudge saying, hey, buddy. You earned that. Wow. That's about all I can say about that. What a great drive from that fourth spot on the restart there. He didn't to seem to know how up. he was going to do it, did he? he when we talked to him. He just went by the seat of his pants right there and just wherever the opening was, when he drove it down into turn three, coming to get the white flag, uh, and was able to really keep it off of Justin Allgaier. There may have been a little contact, but that short track racing, that uh, was just unbelievable drive. Win three in a row. And the celebration begins. He's getting good at it, by the way. Think what he's done in the last three races. Wins at Kentucky over Daniel Hembrick and Kyle Busch in the race. Wins at New Hampshire. Brad Keselowski won a stage and had the lead late in the race. Bell had to find a way by on the flat mile. He did it. And today survives an overtime or several and comes from fourth to first in the final two laps to see this picture. These fans know they're racing too. You know, I appreciate a lot of things about him, that the, the talent that he has, the job that he does on the racetrack. You know, we put him in a tough spot a while ago under the, the red flag situation. He had just lost the lead. It looked like that maybe the, the, a race that he had well in hand, he took the time. Was he dejected? Yeah, he yep. did. But he, he gave us an answer, talked to us, and you don't get that in other sports. You don't, you're not able to go in and get with the, the, the players at that time. As you can see, Justin Allgaier there, I'm sure a little disappointed he wasn't able to hold the lead there. But Chris Bell went back and did the job. Puts the steering wheel back on, and he'll head toward victory lane. You can see everybody getting their tires cleaned up. Ready to go. Brandon Jones actually got a good restart right with Justin Allgaier right here. Bell was with the car that's supposed to fire first. Contact right there. Yeah, and that probably made Justin Allgaier spin the tires a little bit, but he drove it off in the corner and had the lead with no problem. Bell right there was the little bit of contact, and this is the final lap coming to one to go. Yeah, a lot of contact, just like you would have thought. Photo finish if that would have been the last lap right there. And then he finishes the pass here down the back stretch. The crossover to the inside and the clearing here was the big moment. So Allgaier ends up seventh. He's with Brendan gone. Se second, he's with Brendan. Yeah, you know, Justin, you made me look like a genius to start before, but the joy of victory and the agony of defeat. First restart was absolutely amazing. Second one, what happened out there? Well, unfortunately, just uh, we took off there, and the 20 got to my rear bumper and had me lifted up at the start and then lifted up off of turn two and then tried to put me in the fence. And, um, yeah, I'm salty, you know, unfortunately. I watched the deal a couple weeks ago with Kyle and Kyle, and, you know, it's cool to watch. I hope the fans here that were here got their money's worth. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I felt like we'd raced clean all day and I hadn't I hadn't touched him all day and we raced really clean here in the spring and uh, it's just disappointing to get run over uh, like that. But you know what? Uh, hats off to these guys. Everybody at Junior Motorsports has done a, a, a great job. Um, this precision tank Camaro was fast today. We struggled a little bit early. Um, I know that, that Christopher definitely had the best car, but, uh, you know, we we did what we needed to do there at the end and, and capitalized on it. And, you know, it's just 
it is disappointing. I mean, you know, as racers, we're disappointed when we finish second. I just never had an opportunity to get back to him like uh, like Kyle did to Kyle. So um, we'll see. You know, it's uh, it's a good day at Iowa. One and two, the two races here. So um, I know social media is going to blow up. They're going to hate me for being mad at, at Christopher, but it is what it is. Well, from my standpoint, made it fun for the fans, and it was a great job by Justin in the end. Gracious in defeat. There's the winner getting out of his car. We'll talk to him in victory lane when we come back. It's going to be a big celebration, too. These guys sat there. I know Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. Speedway. We're here in victory lane with Christopher Bell. He's going to be getting out here soon. Three in a row in the Xfinity Series. With Christopher Bell, there's the splashes of water. The confetti. Let's find out about that final restart. A hug from the girlfriend. A little kiss too. Chris, take me through that final restart and getting by the seven of Justin Algar. <laughs> when it's your day, it's your day, Parker. I'll take him any way I can get him, man. And you know, we our Reed Camry was really, really good. And uh, just thankful that we were able to to get Root in victory lane. This is their first win. All these Camrys are made in Georgetown, Kentucky, here in the United States. So it's special to win for these guys. But I'll tell you what. That long run there, early in the race, the double zero was able to kind of get out on me, and we were really equal, but I thought he might have been a little bit better, and then my crew chief, Jason, just kept making the car better and better and better, and uh, just praying for no yellow there on that long green flag run, and when it came, it just came time to execute on restarts and let one get away on me, but this thing was so good, I was able to uh, come from the second row and get there. And, and you're the first Xfinity Series regular to win three in a row since 1999 when Dale Jr. last did. What does that mean to you? It's pretty cool, man. I'm just kind of speechless. You know, these races are really hard to win. And growing up sprint car racing and midget racing, you don't have pit stops. You don't have long races like this. And uh, it's been really difficult for me to, to wrap my head around how to run these long distance races. And uh, thankfully, with the great people behind me like Jason and uh, spotter Tony Hirschman wasn't here with us, but I had another great spotter, Al, on top of the roof today. So those guys take good care of me and make sure I keep my head on for all 250. And do you feel like that pass on Justin Algar was totally clean, fair? I mean, I haven't seen it, so I don't know, but spotter was yelling clear, and uh, if I'm clear, then it was clean. If he's clear, then it's clean, guys. I agree with him a little bit. I like the way you looked at it. When it's your day, it's your day, Dale. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But he fought back hard. You know, he could have given up. He could have said, hey, I, I gave that away. But he did a great job of coming back and great short track racing. Playoff picture looks like this. Bell's name stays atop with those four wins. And look at the playoff points. Big gap, 24 back to Algar with eight. Yeah, he's setting himself up nicely to make a run uh, through the playoffs. Uh, but not that we expect him to have any problems or anything like that, but others have got work to do. They, they see who they have to beat for this championship now. Chastain with a career best finish of fourth today in 12th and 40 above the cut line now. So we discussed the pass, and Dale, you take a look at it. What, you, what say you? Okay, yeah, that's a good run that he got off the corner there. Uh, yeah, bump again, and uh, but you know that's down the straightaway. So uh, he, even though it's a little unsettling, yeah, he comes up. He thought that he might be able to drive in far enough to get the slide job done. Wasn't able. A lot of contact here down the straightaway. That's between two drivers, and you know again, this is short track racing. You know, that that's what you do. You know, I guarantee you, if Justin Allgaier, and I understand him being a little upset. Hey, when you don't win, you're upset. You should be mad. And But if Justin Allgaier's in the same position, he's going to do the same things in, in that situation. So it's just a matter of which side you're on. Christopher Bell's the one standing where everybody else wanted to be, and that's in victory lane getting uh, all the accolades. Well, and Justin was willing to acknowledge that the fans loved it, just like they loved that Kyle and Kyle battle in New Hampshire last week. Oh, absolutely. And, and if Justin Allgaier had got out of there and not been disappointed, or mad about the way that it turned out, then you know I would have questioned him, but he's got that in him. He's going to be that. Brandon Jones ended up 12th after all that. Here was the battle for third, and the 21 of Hemrick slides up the track and gets into him. Oh, it got really, really loose getting down there. I don't think there was any contact. He was racing to 18 here. Yeah, there's no contact. He just tried to get in there a little far, and, and the car he got on the scene there and got really, really loose, and unfortunately, two drivers that had run around and inside the top five all day long end up with bad finishes. Hemrick unofficially 11th, Brandon Jones unofficially 12th. There will be another day. So make sure to come back to NBCSN tomorrow 
huge day of racing starting at two with countdown to green we'll set up all the stories for the monster energy cup series from pocono race will begin at 2 30. then the post race we'll talk to the winner and everybody else tell you what we saw and you can have an opinion on what you thought <laughs> indycar racing ends the day 6 30 racing from mid ohio all here on nbcsn Dale, what do you think? Another great Iowa? Oh, another great Iowa. Ne this place never fails to bring us a good race. Thanks to our pit analyst, Brendan Gaughan. Nice rookie day for him. And to Parker Kligerman on pit road as well. Brought us all the action called five pit stops at a time, if I recall. <laughs> we appreciate y'all hanging in there with us today. Overtime finish for Christopher Bill. Christopher Bell wins for the third time in a row. You've been watching NASCAR Xfinity Series U.S. Cellular 250. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.